Does anyone else find it weird that this whole experience is Sabrina just sharing her truth? It is about her sharing her experiences. It is not about spiting any individual. Yet whenever Gus failed her during these events, no matter how minor, she'll emphasize what he did. She'll allude to more things happening, but not actually talk about it. She'll fixate on it and make sure you know exactly how wrong it is and how much it hurt her. She reminds me of Anissa, honestly. I believe Sabrina is not a victim. She's a victim of an ectopic pregnancy, which sucks, but that's not Gus's fault. She's not a victim of him. It never needed to be made public. And frankly, she deserved her channel dying as a result of what she did. So Nick is not green, someone we haven't talked about in a while. He posted a new video. First video he's posted on YouTube in months, I believe. And it's like, um, it's like a new apology video talking about what happened. Now you guys know I went pretty hard on Nick back when that drama happened, but you know, when he did apologize, despite the fact that a lot of people wanted me to hold it against him for forever, I believed it was a real apology and he thought he did something wrong. And he was owning up to it. And he's posted a new video talking about this. He's kind of copying my swag here, it looks like. But whatever. Uh, we're going to watch the video and maybe he's maybe he has something good to say. Maybe he's being honest and base, actually. I made YouTube videos full time for about three years. It was something that I feel like came very naturally to me and I loved doing it for a really long time. And it was basically my identity for a big chunk of my life. Um, in the past six months, I have, for the first time, completely stopped making videos. He actually has, right? I don't think there's been a new Nick is Not Green video in a long... I mean, he's got like five channels, but let's see here. Yeah, three months he hasn't posted a video on the Nick is Not Green channel. What about Green is Not Nick? He hasn't posted a video there in four months. No new videos in four months on this channel. Uh, one of the last videos he posted was I make harmful content that needs to change. How did his yeah, audience take this video? My favorite apology videos are from the YouTubers who make videos making fun of apology videos. It's like apology reception. Nick try not to delete his apology video challenge. I feel like you learned a lot from your last three apologies. Whenever you need to take your next apology, it will be even better. Or make your next. He did make a new one. In fairness, I think he, he does seem to be changing his behavior. He seems to really regret the way things went. So, you know, I think he actually realizes he f***ed up. I think he does. Like, I, act, I actually... You know, I think he does feel bad for what he did. I mean, he's basically given up his income for a few months for it, right? He feels like he wasn't good at making commentary videos and he was a negative influence on the platform. I think it's, I think it's a real apology, man. I've been spending the last few months trying to figure out how to go back into doing this in a way that's comfortable for me. And so this video is kind of a way for me to explain where I'm at what my future plans are for YouTube. And it is also sort of another attempt for me to overcome something that I'm really struggling with. Last year, I made some really bad mistakes with my platform. I was uh, criticized a lot and I was under a lot of public scrutiny for it. And even though a lot of problems that I had with the platform were pre-existing before this controversy, this is what kind of caused me to finally I guess face the unhealthy relationship that I had with my job. I was to be clear, I think um what's his name? Is his name Jimmy? Jimmy Rob Robinson? Okay, Jimmy Robbins. He made a great video about Nick. Someone Nick doesn't um, like. He's made a bunch of them, but he made a gr particularly great segment in here about um Gus Johnson. I would like to control F for that. Gus John and like the allegations that Abelina Sabrina made. I have dealt with months of hate following my coverage on stories like Sneeko or Gus Johnson, both situations where I was harassed endlessly for uplifting the voices of- Harassed endlessly for uplifting the voices. I'm not trying to sh on Nick in this video too much because if he is apologizing, I and I, I feel like it is a real apology. I actually don't, I don't want to sh on him endlessly, but I think it is important to take into account the reason why he's apologizing, right? Because his videos were bad for a while. He was making a lot of false allegations. He was having a lot of conflicts of interest. He just got caught big time with a super mega one, right? Because they actually defended themselves and went after him a little bit. Victims who are attacked just like this. Except that all goes out the window the second he starts losing subscribers. What do I mean? Recently, Ryan from Super Mega. I want to see the Gus Johnson part in particular because there's a segment of this video that goes over it. Wait, I swear there's more in here he found in his coverage of the controversies involving <coughs> super mega and gus johnson and while i've previously covered both of these situations links below i want to talk about his lies in more specific detail because nick will insist that anyone who criticizes his involvement in these situations or even has the nerve to disagree with him fall under the category of being bigoted freaks reddit debate bros or are otherwise negligible that's all true by the way i am a bigoted freak and i am a reddit debate bro i love reddit I love bigotry, and that perfectly describes who I am. So I think that that was a... I, sh I wasn't even mad about that. That was true. <laughs> Chat understands. 
where their opinion does not count. There's too many Reddit debate bro dorks on this website trying to come. The audacity of, well, I feel bad even on him right now for this, but the audacity, the audacity of, of someone who looks like this calling other people dorks and Reddit debate bros is insane. You look like you're the CEO of reddit.com. Listen to a band called Factory 81. Uh, no. Come after me every single day. So much of the criticism I have received <laughs> from making these videos has been from people who never took the time to watch any of the videos I made about the situation, and it becomes increasingly more obvious that they took the word of people deflecting from the truth rather than actually watching all of the videos involved. That That's just not true. That is the definition of attacking someone in bad faith. Now, Nick also likes to lie by omission, leaving out information that reflects poorly on him or his friends. See, at one point, Gus says this. When one person right after a breakup really just smears you like this. Now, this was in reference to Gus's ex encouraging speculation with vague and inflammatory posts while liking dozens of tweets. That Gus Johnson went about his life like this didn't affect him in any way. It was a private matter, but to keep blank suppressed from even her family knowing about things just shows how much of an emotional and mental hold he had on her. We're with you, Sabrina. That change and contradict her original <coughs> story, as well as posting a tweet the day Gus canceled his tour that seemed to gloat about. How spiteful do you have to be to tweet like this, bro? That's showbiz, baby. It being has Abelina Sabrina has she had any channel traction since that? Her channel's dead. Oh my god. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. To be clear, what did what did she accuse Gus Johnson of? She accused him of what did she? Okay, here we go. Allegations explained by Newsweek. Abelina Sabrina and Gus Johnson are YouTubers, blah, 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 blah. In her video, Rio spoke about how she suffered an ectopic pregnancy, which became so bad one of her fallopian tubes ruptured. During this time, she spoke of needing to go to the doctor. She knew something was wrong, but her partner at the time said he wanted to go out and have drinks for work. Later, she discussed how she tried to bottle up her feelings and present, pretend she was okay, but uh, would occasionally rely on him for rides to the hospital. During these times, she claimed he told her that anyone else would have left you by now and described how he found her illness to be a strain on his life. The thing is, even if he did do that, I don't think that needed to be made public at all. Like, he's just he was just a boyfriend or husband, whatever he was to you, right? Did this really need to be made public? He wasn't there when she had a miscarriage? Gotcha. Now, Nick responds to this with the following. Besides the fact that it doesn't use Gus's name throughout her original video, and her relationship with him was only a small but necessary... But, like, people are going to find out the name, right? Like, if I make a big allegation video, and I'm like, my last partner, I'm not going to say their name... And like I had a very public relationship, it's gonna be obvious who I'm talking about. And like it's like so obvious. And like obviously she was okay with people knowing because she was liking and you know tweeting stuff in reference to him vaguely, and then eventually she confirmed it. So like she doesn't really have that defense, does she? Necessary part of the video, which yeah is 100% true. She did not use Gus's name in her original video. However, Nick conveniently leaves out that Gus's ex publicly confirmed she was talking about him within six hours on both Twitter and YouTube. Not to mention the dozens of tweets she liked that referred to him by name. Now that's not a great look when you're accused of launching a smear campaign. So Nick just decides that Gus's ex only liked tweets that echoed her original video, but somehow at the same time, it's okay that she endorsed false accusations and harassment gus does get it yeah because she's in the right and he knows her so she's in the right upset that she liked tweets that made him look bad but they all echoed ideas that she this is the main problem like his conflict of interest a conflict of interest is not necessarily the worst thing ever right like if you make a video about someone and like your friend is like a victim of them you can make that video but it should be a red flag to question that person's coverage and be like is that actually inaccurate and if their coverage is inaccurate, then you can call them out. And the conflict of interest can obviously be a clear indicator. Like they lied about this. They said this probably because this person told them to, or they weren't looking as, or they weren't looking as critically at it because they were friends with someone involved. You get what I'm saying? Already confirmed in her video. These weren't news statements that she was co-signing, but support that she was receiving for a story that was hard for her to tell. Gus also never specifically states what liked or retweeted and how it made him look bad it was just another vague shot that he took at her to make her seem emotional and illogical how do you know that how do you know that that's what happened you saw that line tom true how do you know that's what happened like how do you 1000 know that 
He also <laughs> makes the bizarre claim that Sina created memes. I don't know exactly what he's talking about here because again, he doesn't specify, but I assume that he is talking about the one picture of a Pokemon card that Sina put on her story. For someone who works professionally in comedy, I don't know what his idea of a meme is. For the record, much of the public, including myself, only learned that she was talking about Gus because Nick's brother has 100k subs on YouTube, does he? I think he had a channel with his brother, right? Is it He Said Us? It's the channel that I was watching his apology on, right? This was, was this the channel with his brother? I could be wrong. Why does he have so many channels? He's not Green Brother. Austin Green, oh, this guy. 100k subs, the Clinton Kane TikTok drama is insane. Today, we're going over all of the drama surrounding the musician Clinton <laughs> Kane and how the singer-songwriter was exposed by his former ex-girlfriend in a 14-part TikTok series. Ex I mean, it seems like it's very similar to, uh, it seems like it's extremely similar to what Nick did. Does he verify sources here? I'm not going to assume that it's bad just because he's his brother, but, you know, I would like to know. I would definitely like to know because of a notification on the Twitter homepage. One that showed her either liking a thread that proved it was him or one of the dozens of tweets attacking him by name, as well as her confirming it within the comments of her video. Not to mention that people used the tweet she liked as confirmation of various false accusations. And this exact behavior is a large part of why there are so many misconceptions concerning Gus to this day, all about events that now happened five years ago. All right, so this is Eddie Burback. Uh, it says, Eddie Burbeck discusses the situation with Gus Johnson one last time. I'm pretty sure they used to collab a lot. They used to be good buddies and... <laughs> and final... <laughs> now they're not. I know it's off topic, but thoughts on Boogie's hatred for Jackson Clark? Jackson Clark? He hates Jackson because Jackson years ago said that he thought Boogie faked cancer, right? I assume that's the reason. I like Jackson Clark. I think he's a cool dude. So that's probably why he hates him though, right? Thing is, Boogie, hate Boogie claims to hate everyone who talks him. And then when he meets them, he'll like make a false accusation about them. And then when they prove him wrong, he'll apologize to them and say they're a cool guy and say they're actually cool. Like Boogie has gone back and forth multiple times publicly between like, I'm actually like me, like saying I'm actually a cool guy, like does his due diligence and isn't like a commentary channel to then like all of a sudden I'm like a bad guy again. So I don't know. He's like a delusional liar. However, um, before we do it, uh, I've... I hate doing this. Uh, I would like to very, very quickly for the last and final time just kind of be clear about, uh, you know, everything that happened, if that's cool. Uh, I'm sure we're all pretty exhausted by it by now. Um, and normally I wouldn't want to talk about this stuff, but I feel like if I don't, I'm going to be asked about it for years. Uh, so I just want to be really clear with you guys because I saw some confusion. Uh, God, it even sucks to say. Uh, I mean, I'm, I saw you guys pretty much all assuming it. Like, the podcast is not coming back. Um, I don't want to get into private details too much because I that makes me uncomfortable. Um, but if I'm being honest with you, like, trust between us from me is completely broken, and I just can't work with him in the future. Um, I mean, that's fair. He's not obligated to work with him, you know? I don't think there's anything wrong with him not wanting to be friends with Gus anymore. Regardless of if it needed to be, but regardless of if it needed to be made public, like, I don't know. Honestly, this is extremely mature. Boys don't let boys mistreat people. Lol. Boys don't let boys mistreat people. Um, but regardless of that, I I will defend the general sentiment. Unless he contributed to the false allegations or something, whatever they may be. Um, I don't really think it's his like obligation to work with Gus anymore. He doesn't have to, right? I don't really care if he wants to, if he's like a good friend to him or not. I don't really give a shit. Eddie Birdbath Eddie Birdbath is cringe. I don't really know anything about him. I know uh, he made a video about, like, Margaritaville or something, and I watched some of it, and I was like, that's all right. Not really my thing, though. Thank you, Box Head, for becoming a member. Glad to catch a stream. My fiancé and I get excited to see a new video you put up. Also, I still love the Frank versus Boogie situation. It's pretty funny. I even hate having to say it, but uh, most people understood. Some people didn't. Um, some people are still asking, or maybe just don't know, because it's hard to see all this stuff uh, if it's not posted directly where the content is. Um, so I, I don't know. That's really all I, I want to say about it. Uh, he knows. So he basically just said nothing. Okay. Basically said nothing. Oh, but all of that makes his friend look bad. So Nick just leaves it out or decides it doesn't count. Sounds familiar, right? He also has a habit of stating. Yeah, this is the huge problem with Nick, right? The biggest problem is like, it's kind of the same thing that the quartering does on the other side. Whereas the quartering will like endlessly defend Dr. Disrespect because Doc doesn't like trans people or something or Nick is Nick Merck's doesn't like trans people, he'll defend him because of that, because of, like, culture war reasons. Nick will defend the victim in every situation 
either because he's their friend or because he wants the person in question to be guilty, right? I mean, this is the same thing with, like, Ethan is online, like, going after Alex Rosen. Like, there are things you can criticize Alex Rosen for, but the reason Ethan did it and ha mo the majority of his video criticizing Alex is because he's a conservative, not because of anything else. Thank you, Isaac, for becoming a member. <clears throat> What's up, Achito? people's intentions as fact as if he can read minds again carrying himself as if he has insider knowledge despite that being simply false in fact this habit was the basis of nick repeatedly accusing super mega of covering up an assault to over a million people but as it relates to gus when responding to gus's ex seemingly gloating you, about him having to cancel his tour nick a good fella not nick is not green or nick says this not only does this and so many of gus's complaints <laughs> boil down to Oh man, she was being so mean to me, but the tweet had nothing to do with the tour. Just states it as fact. Like, it's not a hell. Like, how do you know that? How do you know it had nothing to do with the tour? Because Sabrina told you? Are you supposed to just believe her always? A of a coincidence that someone with a proven vendetta tweeted, that showbiz right after Gus announced that he was canceling his tour. And to give you an idea of how full of it Nick really is, he goes from lambasting Gus for assuming that tweet was about him to quite literally <laughs> in his very next sentence, heavily insinuating that a random sketch from Gus is a shot at his ex. And it's ridiculous to monitor what she's doing and assume that everything is about you, even if it is extremely vague. After Gus took a break from YouTube, his first video back was a sketch about a kid who was being overly dramatic about a medical condition and needed an ice pack. It came off as a extremely tone deaf and as if it was a direct shot and because no way he said that no way wait this is like uh this is like in praise of shadows delusion where like wendigoon follows him and he's like what other reason could there be for wendigoon to follow me other than to mock me for my fans calling me the for his fans calling me the f slur right it's like the same pure delusion thank you Legman, for the dollar like it's 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 it, it's just made up in his mind he came up with it. It's like it's like a boogieism. Because his unbiased coverage is little more than fan fiction, Nick will often contradict himself. For example, Nick repeatedly states that when someone comes forth with accusations, they're often attacked and chased off the internet. And everyone knows how these YouTube cancellations end. The canceled creator remains financially comfortable while the victim is bullied by the creators. From I feel like that's not usually the case. I mean, sometimes that happens, but I feel like that's not usually the case at all. Like there's very few, like sometimes that will happen a little bit, but generally, if the evidence is there, the person in question is going to be called out and their career is going to be on and over, right? If they actually are a full assaulter, right? Like, I, I feel like in, in general, things work themselves out <laughs> pretty well. Remaining fans until they leave the internet. No objection so far. But whenever Gus doesn't describe something in vivid enough detail for him, Nick just decides that it's because he's trying to cover something up. But when he has the opportunity to be open and honest about what he did, he refuses to be specific because he knows he can't get away with the horrific. How do you even know what he did though? You weren't there. Did Sabrina provide any proof or did she just say it happened? things he said or did when it's just as likely that gus was being vague because of the very issues nick described but it's more convenient if his friend is perfect and gus is evil so nick will state uh greetings from a dgg -er. thanks for the content you're the best orbiter thank you for the dunno hello i graduated high school a couple months ago wrote your name on the underside of my grad cap well good luck with uh college anything supporting that narrative as fact just like with super mega now between this and the super mega situation notice how nick's language very subtly rewrites events that he wasn't even present for and most of these lies aren't even what is the is jimmy robbins must have videos just... about gus johnson right gus johnson allegations unfortunately i think gus johnson was a part of the emily blm community okay explaining the gus johnson allegations in two a situation in two minutes okay content warning gus johnson is a comedian and youtuber who was very well liked for being creative and seen as a really nice guy that is until it turned out that he was emotional this is the problem can't be seen as a super nice guy because nobody is just a nice guy okay everybody is a mixed bag they have nice moments they have mean moments they have things they regret they have things that they're proud of you don't want to be in this sphere where you're just seen as like a nice, wholesome guy. Because the second that somebody finds out you jaywalked, your career's over. That is until it turned out that he was emotionally abused. What do you mean it turned out? Was that 
Was that proven? ...to his ex-girlfriend, Abelina Sabrina, who is also a YouTuber. <laughs> she talks about her experiences with ectopic pregnancy, which is a type of pregnancy wherein the egg is implanted outside of the uterus, thus making it impossible to birth and an extremely painful and even life-threatening situation for no the... No eggs! ...carrier. In her video, she talks about how her then-boyfriend, later confirmed to be Gus Johnson, not only harassed her and pressured her to have an abortion because of how it would affect his career, but also negated her health needs to go out... Did Gus admit to all of this? ...have drinks with friends <laughs> and suggested often that she was exaggerating her pain. First, when it comes to apologies, Abelina did not accept his apology. And if she didn't accept it, the person that matters... Was his, was his apology, like, admitting to everything? The fact that his boy Eddie bailed on him speaks volumes to me. Does it necessarily, though? Like, just because somebody walks away who also has a very, like, forward-facing PC image... Just because he walks away from his friend, does that really mean that the guy's evil? Most. Is all of this, first of all, proven? And secondly, the question is, do we even need to know this? Then why would anyone else feel it's sufficient? Second, he also owes his viewers an apology, at least for the fact that he seemed like a person who stood against abusers of women and then turned out to be one, which, which is a huge betrayal to his audience. Three, that skit he posted after the dislike button disappeared either shows that he's so, so ignorant or is just very much unapologetic. Or I mean, maybe the skit just has nothing to do with it. I think that's possible. Bro. Elliot Sang. Mr. Sing. Do you think it's possible that, like, the skit had nothing to do with it and he was just making a funny skit? Thick. Hasn't reformed and is actually still making fun of her. Four, he's blocking people who even gently criticize him on Twitter. Five, it's very unlikely that Abelina is using the situation... I mean, just because you block someone on Twitter doesn't mean you did it, right? Maybe he just doesn't want to deal with the emotional distress of that. This cancellation was bogus. Everyone dropped him instantly because he was a bad boyfriend in one relationship. His crime was being emotionally immature. Well, I'm curious if we can verify that here. ...to stir drama and to get clout. Doing this puts Abelina in such a vulnerable position, and her doing so shows a lot of courage, not... Wow. ...some sort of desire for clout. But even if she is using it to stir drama, Truth. what Gus has done and has not denied, so he's done, is much worse. Six, yes, people can grow and change, but they have to hold themselves accountable, and Gus has not shown any indication <laughs> of that. Lastly, parasocial relationships can be very cool when the subject of the relationship has a very healthy and non-toxic and honest relationship with the viewers. But when somebody is dishonest and when somebody is toxic, that's when you see the worst of par Okay, whatever. Proof she lied. The Gus Johnson interview that changed everything. I believe Sabrina and weaponized trauma. All right. Well, this is two years ago. This is one year ago. So I think this is the one to look at first. This definitely seems like the one to... Okay, wait. There's another video, apparently. Jimmy Robbins, Gus Johnson. All right. Abuse, revenge, both. So it looks like this is the first video. And then there's this one. And then there's the interview. We'll start with this one because it looks like it is a quick recap. So for a bit of a refresher, Sabrina has uploaded a video now titled My Pregnancy. In this video, she outlines troublesome things done by an ex- What are your thoughts on President Biden referring to the president of Ukraine as President Putin and calling his VP VP Trump? I think he's the GOAT. Boyfriend who she was keeping anonymous because she wanted to be the bigger person and make the video about women's health care, not vilifying her ex. Which is why, of course, logically, she confirms his identity in six hours across multiple platforms. <laughs> Lamal. Yeah, because obviously she did. Because that's, a, that's what she wanted to happen. She wanted people to know. People always do this. Like, if you're going to make an allegation against someone, just say it. Don't dance around it for, like, points. Stop. It's so dishonest. ...and essentially led a brigade against him until she was called out for misleading her audience. At which point she backed down and said she was a victim of everyone else changing her narrative. Sure. And my previous video was showing all of the ways she was being misleading and inconsistent, like the one I just mentioned. And after releasing a statement, Gus went completely silent, except for... I'm aware of a recent video that calls out some actions that I'm not proud of and I want to apologize. The circumstances were extremely hard and complicated for both of us. I can't begin, even begin to imagine how difficult it was for her. We were young and not remotely prepared to deal with the realities of a long-lasting and traumatic medical situation. During the talks, counseling, and therapy we went through together following this time, I came to grips with my behavior and recognized my shortcomings. I'd like her to know how deeply sorry I am. I realized what I did wrong and wish I could change how I responded and acted during that time. So what he did was he pressured her to get an abortion. Sorry, he wasn't there during her miscarriage? What is her video? All right. Abelina. 
Sabrina, my pregnancy, my ectopic pregnancy two years ago. We're going to put her on 1.5 times speed. One million views includes paid promotion. What is this a sponsored video? Wait. Oh, was that just hold on? Wait, it includes paid promotion. What the on an allegation video? That is crazy from someone like this. That's crazy in general. That's especially crazy for Abelina Sabrina. Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, maybe it's sponsored by Rocket Money. Oh, it says that on a whole bunch of random videos. Oh, is it not sponsored? Is it? Am I wrong? The thing is, I don't. I don't even see like a sponsorship thing in the description. So maybe it's not sponsored, and that's just wrong. Let me just backtrack and show you guys how I got there. So years ago. What is this, like, 824? Is this an 824 movie? What is this? Her claim is that while she was going through all her problems, he was off drinking with Eddie and Sven. Well, hello. Um, on this very day, a certain number of years ago, I was in the hospital dying. It was the worst experience of my entire life, and I don't recommend it. 10 out of 10, don't recommend, not even with rice. And I was alone for most of it. But little by little, as I did open up to some friends, I ended up finding that similar stuff like this happens. Um, I don't even know where to go from here. <sighs> um, let me just backtrack and show you guys how I got there. So years ago, I found out that I was pregnant and I did not want to be. I was not ready for that. And as soon as I confirmed it at home, I made a doctor's appointment and I went immediately just to get a second confirmation and just find out where to go from there. I had Kaiser Permanente at the time. They suck. First of all, Kaiser, you suck. I'm so happy I'm not with you anymore. Why? Did Gus want this to be public that they had the abortion? I feel like it's kind of a thing to out. I mean, obviously people are going to act irrationally during a situation like that. Like, did that, did that really need to be made public? That they had an abortion? When is this from? More. Okay, so but even though we're in California. This is from 2021. So this is already almost three years old. And whenever this happened was years prior to this. You know, the bluest state probably in the whole country, you still have to go through quite a few hoops to terminate a pregnancy. And it's scary. And even at the first doctor's appointment, I think it didn't fully set in what was happening. They had to refer me out to Planned Parenthood because Kaiser Permanente refused uh, to do it, which is wild. So they referred me out to Planned Parenthood. I, you know, made the appointment there. I went and they couldn't see anything, which was weird because I was certainly far enough along for something to be seen and they couldn't see anything. So they thought, well, maybe you're not as far along as we thought. Come back in two weeks or something, which, you know, when you're trying to not be pregnant anymore is not what you want to hear at all, especially when most of the medical workers that you've been interacting with have been telling you things like, are you sure you want to do this? You have to be 100% sure. If you're even 99% sure, we're not going to let you do this. So it sticks with you a little bit. I always knew that I had to end it but um, it, it's just harder when you're getting a lot of opposing pressure, pressure to not do it from medical staff and honestly, your own body. <laughs> it's so weird. Like once you get those hormones in your body, there's like this instinct that kicks in that makes you want to protect it. Even though your brain is like, no, no, we're not ready for this. This was always the plan. If this happened, you promised your boyfriend that we would do this. So it was really scary to be receiving all this conflicting pressure from medical staff and your body to not do it. And then being pressured by your partner to do it. Pressure by your partner to do it. But didn't, didn't you say you wanted to get the abortion anyway like uh, why complain about being pressured by your partner he's probably nervous about the fact that he's not ready for a kid right so why why is it a problem that he's telling you to get an abortion when you already want to do it i don't really get it it felt like i didn't even have a choice it really felt like i wasn't even allowed to consider what would happen um if i didn't but you didn't want to do it anyway, I thought, right? I'm so confused. And I'm reiterating over and over. I mean, look at my appointments. This was always what I was going to do. I was constantly taking the steps. So you were always going to do it anyway, but you're mad about him for wanting you to do it. And you're also mad that you didn't have the ability to consider that maybe you wanted to keep the kid. To end the pregnancy. But it's really scary when somebody's forcing you to do it. What do you mean forcing you to do it? I thought you wanted to do it. Also, I mean, how did he force you? Like, you, technically, you can do what you want, right? Like, you're a legal adult. You can just choose to have the kid, right? I thought women had, like, a right to their autonomy or something. Um. 
And I did have moments of weakness where I would cry and say things like, okay, but honestly, like, can we just consider, like, what if we didn't do it? Still gonna do it, but can we just consider what would happen if I didn't? And he would say, like, no, it's, it's not even a question. You're gonna ruin my life if you do that. That would be the worst thing to ever happen to me. Uh, as along the lines of things that he would say. And at one point, he even said that he would break up with me. I'm curious if before this happened, did they talk about what would happen if they got her knocked up, right? I mean, typically when you're having sex with someone, it's good to have an agreement like, if I knock you up, we're going to get rid of it, right? Like, that's kind of a conversation you should have, you should have beforehand. It seems like she didn't even want to have the kid, and he didn't want her to have it. If I didn't do it, and that he would resent me, and the potential child. I mean, if you don't want to have a kid, you're probably going to resent it, right? You're probably going to resent her, too. I feel like that makes sense. <laughs> I feel like that makes perfect sense. And, um, Does she provide any like evidence for what this guy did, for what Gus Johnson did in any of this? That's really stuck with me. Because then at that point, and mind you, I <laughs> haven't told anybody. I think I told one single friend. Couldn't tell my family. I couldn't tell. I couldn't talk to anybody. I... <laughs> I'm just really scared. Why? You can, right? Like, what? Why? I, also, I mean, I, I don't understand how he forced you either. Like, does he have, like, a legally binding contract on you? Does he put you on a leash? Like, you can just not... Like, te technically, you can do what you want, right? Scary. And so at that point, it's like, well, if you're making threats like that, why should I consider you in this decision at all? And so I did start to think a little bit more. Should I actually end it? And it's true, that was me reneging. Because I feel like when you start a relationship, you have the conversation of, hey, if you get pregnant, what's the, what's the plan? And of course, it's so easy to say like, oh yeah, absolutely, I'm not ready to be a parent yet. No, not anytime soon. But God, it's so much scarier when it's happening to you in real life. So you admit that you reneged on the decision? You admit that you agreed to have sex with someone who is your boyfriend. You agreed at that time before you had sex or before this moment came that you got pregnant, we're gonna get rid of the child. If that, if that happens, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do a Mossberg up the type situation, plant parenthood, ba bow! Take that kid the freak out. But then when you get pregnant, you like change your mind? Like, I don't, I don't think that's, I mean, at that point, like it's half, first of all, it's half his kid, so you should take into account what he says. But secondly, you can still technically do what you want. So that was really hard. And then I just kept having pain and bleeding and nobody took me seriously. And then one morning I woke up at about 4 a.m. to the most, intense pain I've ever felt in my life in my lower left abdomen and it was so sharp and painful I went to the bathroom because you know I'm all of a sudden I'm bleeding a lot which can't be normal <laughs> and I couldn't even stand up because the pain was just so intense I went to the doctor multiple times and one of the first times I went the lady was just like well just take some Tylenol and go home what do you want me to do and then I went again later that day because I was still having so much pain and they said uh oh you're probably miscarrying Hold on. I gotta give her a wet willy real quick. Ooh, you like that? You like the wet willy, don't you? You like that wet willy? Ooh. I'm gonna get the other finger ready, middle finger. Ooh, wet willy. You just got wet willied. Ooh, it hurts, doesn't it? It hurts. You just got wet willied, son. The wet willy is so powerful, dude. If you ever need to, if you need to punish someone, the wet willy is far greater than any physical violence, okay? Wet Willy and girls is so funny, too, because they hate it. Wet Willy girls, uh, Dutch oven girls, you don't know what that is, look it up. It's a very uh, safe tactic, okay? Just put them under there, close the blanket, and let it rip, okay? Hit her with the... I don't even need my hands. <laughs> hit her with that, okay? Hit her with, hit, hit her with the Dutch oven. Go bleed it out at home. And then... Over the course of the next few days. So that's my form of contraception. I fart in her. You know, I'm just taking medicine to manage the pain, which is constant. And I'm still bleeding a lot. <laughs> my appetite is weird. Even eating something as small as a grape caused so much pain. So I wasn't really eating. But my stomach was growing. A lot. For the span of a few days, my stomach probably expanded from here to here. And it didn't make sense. Boogie and I would pull the advice nurse and they would say, oh, you're probably gassy. <laughs> and so, you know, I did. See, she's got a fart. She's got to let it rip. She's got to do the Dutch oven on Gus. And take things like gas X and stuff. And I'm like, I don't think this is helping. I'm still in a lot of pain. And, and you know what? It's, it's just so frustrating too. Cause I know at multiple, multiple <laughs> visits, I did request imaging and I never got it. Like, not like the imaging where like they go on top of the tummy. Cause that's not in depth. Like I asked for like more intensive imaging, like where they actually go in and they wouldn't do it. And I really wish that they would have. I was at work. 
and, you know, trying to suck it up. And then all of a sudden, the weirdest painful sensation came over me again. But this time, it made me really dizzy and faint, and my heart was just racing, and I had this pain in my lower abdomen. I just knew something was wrong. And so I left work early. I called my boyfriend, and I told him, something's wrong. I'm going to the hospital again. I don't, I don't feel well. Something is wrong. And he said, okay, well, I have work to do and it involves other people. And then we're going to go out and get dinner and drinks with them. So I had to go to the hospital alone. <sighs> that is a super thing to do. I will say you should not have done that. That is very, 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 very bad boyfriend territory. I'm curious how old he was at this time. Was he like 21, 23? If he was in his 30s, that's like absolutely insane. But I don't know if he's like 20, if he's like 18 to 25, I probably would say you could chalk it up to immaturity. I would like to know how old he was. Is this abuse? No. And I was there for about four hours by myself. <laughs> Most of it in the waiting room. Just feeling like I'm dying the whole time. And finally, they call me back and they do tests and imaging and... I still remember when they took me down to radiology to do my ultrasound. Finally, I'm getting the in-depth ultrasound. And if you guys know anything about ultrasounds, you know that the techs are not- Just showing back, what are we talking about? We're talking about the Gus Johnson allegations, my friend. Allowed to tell you your diagnosis at all. You have to hear it from a doctor. Why is this anyone's business? It's truly not. And so- I will never understand YouTubers' strong compulsion to tell their audience about their private life. Don't you have friends to talk about this with? I'm laying there, and I still remember it perfectly. The ultrasound tech is in there, and she seems confused by something. So she gets another tech's input. I don't know if it's like her manager or just another person. And then the other tech goes, yeah, that's her uterus. And then the original tech says, no, that's her uterus. And I'm just laying there like, what are you talking about? Uterus What's happening? Was on? And they wouldn't tell me anything. Of course, because that's part of you know their job. Like they can't um, just in case they're wrong, they need a doctor to look at it. Um, so finally, they sent me back upstairs, and I'm still alone. <laughs> and my phone is dying. I'm hoping that my boyfriend can come. No, you can't play as Candy As soon Crush. as he can. And I decide because I parked at like a high up level. I'm like, well, <laughs> um, since it's nighttime now, I don't want to have to take an elevator or stairs because I won't feel safe. I'm gonna move my car to the first level now that it's starting to clear up. And I get in my car and. I, I didn't put my seatbelt on. Uh, you know, I, I was in a parking garage. I was going like five miles an hour. And something about the beep of the seatbelt that needed to be clicked was just so ominous and foreshadowing. It sounded like a heart monitor. I just knew there was something wrong. I just knew it. Parked my car, got my charger, went inside, charged my phone. Finally, it seems like boyfriend is on his way, so that's nice. And he comes right in time to get the diagnosis. I had an ectopic pregnancy in my left fallopian tube. It ruptured. I mean, it's super sh he wasn't there. He probably just thought it wasn't something super serious, if I had to guess, right? When she edited the sound in, yeah, it is kind of insane. She made it like a <laughs> slam poetry session. <laughs> She's a good actress, dude. I'll give her that. I buy it. I've been bleeding internally ever since. They were surprised I wasn't dead. And that if I don't have surgery right then and there, I was going to die for sure. And as an added bonus, the surgery might not go well, and I might die during that too. So here, Jesus. sign these waivers and paperwork, because... You don't have a choice anymore. It just really felt like my body, my choice never got to even apply to me. And that part really sucked. So, yeah, for those of you who are wondering in my nose video uh, that I recently uploaded about when I talked about the traumatic OR experience that I had, there it is, a month ago for my for my nose. I was in a totally safe environment, safe OR. I just, the PTSD, I just had a moment. I felt like I was back in that first Kaiser Permanente OR all over again, and I burst into tears and had a panic attack. And yeah, it's really affected me ever since. Anyway, the surgery ended up starting at like 10 or 11. It ended around 2, 1, or 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., something like that. I barely remember coming out of it. I think I remember asking Dr. Friend, which is funny that the on-call surgeon was named Dr. Friend. She was very, very kind about it. But um, they went in there with a little lap. Naming the doctor, kind of strange. Horoscopic surgery and they made two incisions right here on my uh, lower abdomen. And they also went in through my belly button. Yeah, my entire left- Wait, what was that comment? Yeah, my entire left fallopian tube exploded lower abdomen and they also went I think you need to tone up your stomach area as it's kind of gross and flabby but I do have post nut clarity <laughs> that is that guy is insane 
to be clear, her stomach looks fine. You're being an ape, okay? Her stomach looks fine. Went in through my belly button. Yeah, my entire left fallopian tube exploded, so I don't have that anymore. She was able to save my ovaries, so that's nice. They're just kind of like stuck onto the actual uterus, so I still have them for like hormone purposes. I can't use them. <laughs> so there I go, half my ovaries. <laughs> and now I'm at a higher risk of having this happen to me again if, if I ever become pregnant again. You know, they say, oh yeah, people have ectopic pregnancies and, and they end up having children later. But I don't read a lot about what happens like if you have like an ectopic rupture. That's what I'm a little scared of. Anyway, so surgery finished and I didn't even consent to this because clearly like I was under like general anesthesia and barely waking up. I did not consent to being kicked out at 3 a.m., but they did. They wheeled me out and I, I couldn't even really stand up all that well by myself. I was extremely nauseous and... It Sounds like Dr. Friend is not a friend. It's Dr. Enemy. Dr. Enemy in the house! Was awful. And a boyfriend drove me back to, to his place because I still didn't get to tell anybody. Right before surgery, um... Just in case it did go wrong, I called my mom and I just, I lied and I said it was, oh, and a very insist. It's okay, not so a- So he was sh but he did show up eventually. I mean, that's good. I don't, I just, I, I have yet to see where he's like evil, I guess. Like, it seems like he was pretty immature for not going there and prioritizing work over the girl he got pregnant being in the hospital. But it doesn't sound like he's like the worst person ever or like this is unforgivable. Maybe between them, this is unforgivable. Like I wouldn't, I would say they should probably break up considering how traumatic this is, but- um, ultimately it's up to them and I don't really think the public needs to be involved in any way, honestly. Big deal, but I just want to let you know what hospital I'm at. Don't come! Because I don't want anybody to find out. Don't come! But, um, yeah, I didn't really tell her how severe it was. I remember even before surgery too, once I found out what was about to happen, I called my sister. And I'm like, oh hey, I'm at the hospital. And the first thing she says in the most judgmental voice is, what, you're pregnant? And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> so I also lied to her and told her it was an ovarian cyst. And... Yeah, I haven't really been able to tell people about this over the years. Just kind of had to keep... So you wanted to tell your YouTube audience instead? It's myself. And it sucks because this thing has changed my life so much. I am from surgery after. Fully blame him because that is a lot of responsibility to put... For it and the only person i could really lean on was my boyfriend because i couldn't tell anybody and i don't fully blame him because that is a lot of responsibility to put on a single person but he started to get real sick of me i couldn't sleep by myself for the longest time so i was over at his place and i'm sure his roommates you know love that but um i was just broken for a really long time i was trying to put myself through therapy i would try i don't doubt that she is traumatized like there's no doubt about that i just i don't think that it's really gus's fault did he behave the best in the situation? No. And obviously he should have his regrets around this. And if this happens again, he should not, uh, he should not do that again and treat a woman or a partner of his that way. But I, I don't think he's like abusive and I don't think it needs to be brought to the public. Certainly. It sounds like he was a boyfriend at a time when he didn't really know how to handle something super serious, like a pregnancy. Try to take myself to the doctor whenever, you know, stuff would spike and it was just the worst. And, I, and, he, and boyfriend started to resent me. And so I, I tried bottling it up even more and, and not telling him until I was absolutely. I think part of the main problem with this is if what that guy said is true, we watched the summary. If Gus had like a very nice guy persona, he's like an amazing guy, can never do anything wrong. And then this came out. It is partially, very slightly on him because he presented himself that way. And then people found out later. But I don't think he could have expected this to come out in any way. What if you got me pregnant? But baby? Yeah, I'll only have babies through the anus certain that I needed to go to the doctor and I would not be able to drive myself like if I try really hard to be independent but sometimes I just can't and those were the moments where I just couldn't and at one point why is the fireplace in the back does this need to be there does the fireplace really need it like can you just make a normal video why does it have to be like this he was talking that's how I need to tell my story my way talking about how hard it was having to take care of me when I would have those moments mind you they, I never stopped him from doing anything or going anywhere. He still continued to live his life as if nothing ever happened. And there I am in the background in the shadows, just trying to pretend that I don't feel like I'm dying. It's really hard. And then he would, you know, sometimes tell me things like, you know, Sabrina, someone else would have left you by I know no, Gus did that right? bad stuff. Check out my physique, Sabrina. So the lack of support was really Does hard. Does Gus Johnson look like um, this? Didn't think so, chat. And... I had to put myself through think so. therapy to try to minimize these episodes because I don't I don't want 
that. And I don't want to get hooked on like Xanax or Ativan to try to like take the edge off when I'm- Okay, so what? From his point of view, because he didn't want me to exaggerate my symptoms or, but it was a lot, but um, it just felt like I had to grow up even faster. Okay, so from this video, I don't really see a reason to hate Gus Johnson. We're gonna play out the last three minutes or so of this, but I mean, it, I understand why she would be mad at him, but I don't see why the audience has to have any n super super negative impression of Gus. Like, I, I guess I exist in a very different content sphere than this person, right? Like, I, I'm not as parasocially attached. I don't really care if the people I'm watching are great people as long as they're not files, right? Um, I mean, there are other things. If they, like, you know, like Illuminati, she's not a, but she's a horrible person. Like, I obviously care about that to an extent, but... Um, I feel like with like it's just it's drama from a personal relationship where he was like a boyfriend. I just don't see why this needs to be made public at all. Ninety percent of YouTube drama wouldn't exist if stuff like this wasn't made public. There's zero reason why personal issues like this need to be public. I agree. Yeah, but apparently this wasn't a one-time thing. She was going to the hospital five times a week with no changes in diagnoses. I mean, that's another thing to bring up, right? She was constantly there. He probably thought it wasn't a big deal, right? He probably should have been there, but he, he probably just didn't think it was anything out of the ordinary. And he did come eventually. He was there for the surgery, right? He brought her home. I just don't think this needs to be made public at all. Like, once again, I just, I don't, I don't really see it. I could be totally off base here. Maybe I'm a sociopath, but I just don't think it needs to be made public. I don't. I guess it's not, it's not like he's like a, a pattern abuser getting girls ectopically pregnant. And then like, that's not really a circumstance you can replicate, right? One of the worst things about Kaiser is you can't even sue them. If you're a Kaiser Permanente member, you automatically waive your rights to take them to court and you have to use like their own uh, arbitration system. So nothing ever came out of that. Don't have a fallopian tube anymore. I got dismissed multiple times by multiple doctors. I was refused when I asked for imaging. And the thing is, if we would have caught this sooner, when it comes to ectopic pregnancies, uh, there is- like the doctors are shitty. Not Gus Johnson a shot that you can have that will terminate the pregnancy and then you won't have a ruptured fallopian tube uh but I, I didn't get to have that i didn't even know what an ectopic pregnancy was nobody has ever taught me that nobody tells you how often even a, a miscarriage is likely to happen yeah the education system really failed us so i feel bad for the people that have bits and pieces of that back now now i'm not the smartest person in the world by any means i'm actually quite bimbo so i'm gonna put some resources in the description down below in the description below because my biggest regret is not having one <laughs> thanks for listening to me Thanks for listening to whatever you decide to do is your choice. Because my biggest regret is not having one. But you did have one. Like you made the choice before you had sex, right? Imagine if the roles were reversed. Okay. Imagine if the guy in question was like, oh, we're going to have a kid. The girl's like, yes, we're going to have a kid. We're so excited. And then she got pregnant. And then he was like trying to get her to abort it. Like the, everybody would be so mad. They'd be so pissed. And honestly, rightfully so, given what they believe about, you know, women's choice and whatever. Right? If she made the choice ahead of time, she should be able to follow through and have the kid. The guy shouldn't be able to pressure her after the fact. Like, I, I thought women had agency. I thought it was 2024. Like, I, I don't really get it. Use her ad link to be fabulous. I would use her ad link to be fabulous. It doesn't look like it's even... I can't... From all of these, it doesn't look like it's actually a sponsored video, really. There's no paid promotion from what I can tell. Well, anyway, uh, so we got that on lock so now i guess it's time i want to go back to gus's response so he said i'm aware of a recent video that calls out some actions that i'm not proud of and i want to apologize the circumstances were extremely hard and complicated for both of us but i can't even begin to imagine how difficult it was for her we were both young and not really prepared to deal with all the realities of a long-lasting and traumatic medical situation during the talks counseling and therapy we went through together following this time keep in mind she never talked about this did she i came to grips with my behavior and recognized my shortcomings and i would like her to know how deeply sorry i am I feel like this just could have been sorted out privately between these people. I, once again, I feel like this didn't need to be made public at all. It sounds like two people were in a terrible situation they were unfamiliar with and that Gus didn't handle it well. Everyone handles grief differently, and it sounds like Gus didn't handle it well, but that doesn't make him an evil abuser, and whatever narrative Sabrina's trying to sell, it makes him human. We live in a world where these dumb kids think everything is polarized. You're either an evil, abusive narcissist, so psychopath, or you're a perfect, infallible saint. This worldview, which seems to be more and more common each day, is absolutely delusional. I don't personally know either of these people, and I certainly wasn't anywhere near them when all this was going on, so I don't know or care. I'm not taking sides, because that's the normal, reasonable stance on this. Why is everyone obsessed with other people's personal lives these days? It's creepy. Stop it. Well, because people are morons. All right. So we know the basics. I think it's time to watch this video by Jimmy Robbins, where he goes over it. Abilene Sabrina and Weaponized Trauma, parentheses Gus Johnson, apology. 
I'm drunk. Enjoy gunny, Mr. Gun. Enjoy money, Mr. Guntuber. Well, thank you very much, bro. I appreciate it. Sponsor the Okay, is there actually a sponsor the vid? Thanks for listening to my story. Way! This video is sponsored by Fabulous. No way! <laughs> Dude, she's based. She accused her ex-boyfriend of being a horrible person because he didn't show up to the hospital. Tried to ruin his career and she sponsored it? Dude. Base. I left when you copied Dr. Dis. What did I miss? You missed your mom. Above her copyright, there's an ad 25. Yeah, dude, this is insane. It's a, it is a sponsored video. <laughs> Base, dude. She's cool. She don't give a fuck. She don't give a fuck. Oh, oh. Sabrina got the dog in her. Holy. Why do you need Fabulous? Fabulous is the number one self care app to help you build better habits and achieve. Uh, how did no one. Keep your goals. How did not a single person. They probably want to sponsor her again. <laughs> Bruh. This is not a red flag to anyone that this is a sponsored allegation video. How do you use Fabulous? Habit changing and habit building is hard. Fabulous makes it easy for anyone to develop and stick to healthy habits thanks to... Bro. Science max daily routines. As a result, you <laughs> yeah, feel go healthier, more fulfilled, and get that bag, girl. Unlike uh -uh. other self development apps, I'm so happy for you. Clear, more rewarding, fun. That is fabulous. That's so fabulous. Oh my god. And has a more supportive approach. Talk about conflict of interest. And she's like all happy now. She's got her little, her cute little dress on. Ooh. Gentler, more rewarding, fun, and has a more supportive approach. Its interactive system serves as a guide to finding your ideal daily routine and actually make it stick. And if you get premium membership, all content is unlocked. Unlimited. Dude, this person is a slime ball. Oh my God. All right. Well, this video seems really disrespect. The only thing I really agree with is the, the idea that Gus's audience turned on him and he's partially responsible for accumulating that audience. Maybe, but I, I feel like this wasn't that big of a deal. Honestly, we're gonna get into the Jimmy video. Gatekeep gaslight girl boss. Dude, she's cool. She won. She don't give a f on tet. That's on tet. She don't give a f on tet. Holy freaking Zam. Shamalima ding dong. Base, base, base girl boss, dude. I love her. She's cool. For December 3rd, 2021, when he uploaded a sketch titled The Kid in Gym Class Who Always Got an Ice Pack. But I'll, I'll talk about that more a little later because it ties into a point I make later. But in essence, some people thought that the sketch was a shot at Sabrina because it made fun of a kid exaggerating his injuries. And their whole controversy was about him thinking she was exaggerating her medical condition. And so when his sketch was negatively received, Gus went back into silence until January 23rd when he... I mean, it's kind of fair of him to assume she's exaggerating her medical condition when, like, she claims something is wrong, but she went to the hospital, like, five times before she got it determined to be an ectopic pregnancy. And every time she went, they were like, yep, you're good, you're fine, you're fine, pat on the back, put a little Vicks vapor rub on it, and you're good. Like, I, she, she, did, she did definitely go through, like, a medical trauma, but it's just not Gus's fault, and I don't think he should have been roped into this and called out at all. He uploaded a statement on the situation to YouTube. Basically, he says that he was short-sighted <coughs> and selfish with his actions due to putting his fear above his partner's, and they sought therapy as both a couple and individuals. Make a note of that. He also admits he came to realize that he handles moments of crisis poorly and shuts down, which is consistent with Sabrina's claims, and then he wishes her the best. The apology is basically the same as his Twitter apology. There's nothing really new here. But a lot of people were initially annoyed that he didn't release any kind of state. Did this guy lose some weight? Hold on. Am I tripping? It seems to be like Jimmy Robbins lost some, some weight. If you ask someone to name... I think he lost... Maybe he didn't. Maybe he just got a better haircut. I don't know. If he did lose weight, W Riz. ...statement on YouTube. Before going into the Twitter nonsense, it is worth noting that Gus allegedly deleted multiple critical comments. I think you could argue her video is just a story time video, not an allegation video, considering she didn't name him. I would say that. The problem is then when people start naming him on Twitter, she, like, likes it. She confirms it later on explicitly. She dances on the grave when his show tour is canceled, saying that's showbiz, like... Initially, it was a story time video, and like technically, it's up to her to share that. I don't think she should, but she can do that. But she then encouraged his career to suffer as a result of what she went through. 
Sounds like she has a goose loose. True. The goose is loose. <laughs> of his video, at least one of which was from a sizable creator whom Gus worked with at least. Gus hid my comment from his apology video as expected once he also put a decent amount of emphasis on the fact that these events happened over three years ago and that they dated for three years after you can draw whatever conclusion i mean obviously a conclusion that you can draw is like maybe she wasn't that mad at the time and she stayed with him and like they worked through it i'm curious like how it was their breakup amicable was it because of this why did they break up what's the deal with that you want from those two points i'm not here to tell you how to think and initially his apology was received really really well with a lot of people basically saying this was a good first step in moving on from this situation people were calling it human and mature because he in no way attempts to go after sabrina and now we must go to twitter our first mistake but we're doing it anyway yeah people on twitter are geniuses no one's ever said anything wrong on twitter they always respond to allegations well fairly they don't totally vilify the person involved and try to make them look like a horrible human being when they're not they don't push false allegations couldn't be the case seth in chat says tom forced me to carry his dark seed to term and give boy birth that's true our mulatto child was going to be beautiful okay we call him at moulinyan tom pay money webby did an interview yeah we're going to check that out later we're just going through the entire thing right now we're running it back chat way after seeing the video sabrina tweeted the following Never been to couples therapy a day in my life. Yeah, get ready for this because Reddit and Twitter literally changed their opinions of the situation around five times in 24 hours. Yeah, probably just based on whatever each person says. And no, like evidence is probably never a factor in any of this, right? But okay, so he lied. Okay, well, that's the last nail in the coffin. Gus can't lie in his comeback video. That, that's unacceptable. Or at least you'd think. Gus responded with his own statement saying, very confused why Sabrina is claiming I Ooh, lied. Ooh, a little bit of evidence, my apologies. perhaps. We a little bit of screenshots. You're done for. You're done for, Sabrina. It's over. Sabrina, the teenage adult witch. It's over. Did hours of couples coaching sessions with us. It's about money. It's about power. We stay hungry. We devour. When you're right, you're right. Specialist that Sabrina picked out herself. Make a note of that. During these sessions, we worked on conflict resolution, communication, goals, etc. Here is some proof. And he includes screenshots of three sessions worth of invoices. It's worth noting that this is really the first time in this whole situation that Gus stands up for himself, for a lack of better words. Up until this point, he has not once tried to escalate the situation or contradict Sabrina's claims, and mostly has just- He showed her mercy, which he totally could have escalated it by, like, posting a reply that contradicted what she said. But he said he let her have her moment until she started dancing on his career, naming him, going after him. And then he finally weighed in when she accused him of lying, right? Express <clears throat> regret. He hasn't even tried to share his side for whatever reason. It could be because he doesn't want to brigade her with his larger following. It could be because his side makes him look just as bad, if not worse. Or it could be because people wouldn't really listen to him once they made up their minds. I don't know, and I won't assume. And Sabrina decided to come back with w, a not assume slam that. dunk that, um, actually... It wasn't couples therapy, guys. It was coaching. Ah, oh, it's a nice goalpost you got there, Sabrina. Hold on, what was that tweet? Coaching. Unlicensed TikTok dating coaches are not therapists. Okay, well, maybe they're not, but, like, if you went to see someone, you could at least say that, right? You shouldn't just say, I never attended therapy. These sessions were not regarding my pregnancy or PTSD, but mainly centered around Gus's desire to f other people and have him be okay with it. Damn. Based seed spreader, we call him. But okay, that's interesting. Ah, oh, it's a nice goalpost you got there, Sabrina. I, I would ask if you need help moving it, but you are a natural. And the reason I call it moving the goalpost is because... Freestyle for me? Uh, Double fried corn dog. Too mad died playing wart... Uh, uh, double fried corn dog. Too mad died playing his road hog. Boogie so fat, he should go for a road jog. When I stick it in, I call it my fat hog. I'm gay. I suck penis. I'm gay. I like to go to McDonald's to get a fish fillet. Sometimes I, sometimes I suck. Me and Sketch are in the cut. Proving to the world we both like to suck dick on phonem grave. My path on YouTube, it's what I pave. 
Harder than my penis. I'm sucking on your weenus. This orange four-inch door hinge has a lot of m m meanness. When you find out it's the same old shit, drama slot, <laughs> lol. All right. By the way, the orange four-inch door hinge was ripped from some M. Just saying. Everything else is my original bar, okay? I gadaga dee gadaga da -ga -do on your mom. When she hears my flow, she can't stop slobbing on my little tom. But it's actually really big when I measure it. That shit hurts. Kind of like Boogie's cancer lies. I turn your trauma into turds. By turds, I mean money. I like my eggs runny. I know I'm not funny. I only say that when I'm gay. I like to eat fish fillets. All right, there you go. It went from never been to couples therapy to actually it was coaching and it wasn't even about me. She went on to say, quote, like Once again, what a very disingenuous way to frame everything here, right? It wasn't couples therapy. It was just therapy with a non-couple therapist. We never did that. Like, uh, You probably called it couples therapy at the time and then like retrospectively you're like, oh, it's not couples therapy. They were a fake therapist. <laughs> These sessions were not regarding my pregnancy or PTSD at all, but mainly centered around Gus's desire to other people and have me be okay with it. And while most people were still supportive of Sabrina, at least on Twitter, she started to receive a lot more criticism, with people saying she was misleading with her initial statement she and was. her disclosing the topic of couples counseling, a supposed safe space, was a low blow and inappropriate. And this is the exact same thing that happened in October, where she... I won't accept a misleading apology with lies in it. I don't forgive you. In response to him saying he changed over the three years, okay? Implied that Gus was consistently abusive, only to reveal that, no, 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 she called him a liar because, get this, he had the audacity to work after her rhinoplasty. A, a rhino, wait, what, a rhinoplasty? Isn't that a nose surgery? So there's like a different medical thing that went on, and she got like an optional medical cosmetic surgery, and he decided to work after that? Is that what is being said here? A minor cosmetic procedure and that pattern i was going on about well while editing it went a little further she ended up doing the same exact thing here she deleted the second tweet i mentioned but has still left up the first tweet saying never been to couples Lamal. therapy it is literally the same exact thing she did last time down to the letter which five thousand yeah. likes oh my god this drama was huge how did i miss this back in the day i guess i'm just not a huge gus johnson fan so that's how i i wasn't tapped the freak in but oh my god bro you can be Team Sabrina or whatever, but the first statement was misleading. You cannot argue otherwise. There is a huge difference between accusing someone of fabricating events that did not happen. And when somebody has this many inconsistencies and is willing to lie about little things, you start to question, like, how much do they lie about the bigger picture, right? That's always a question. Obviously, he admitted to some wrongdoing, to being a bad boyfriend. But beyond that, I think any accusation is kind of dumb. Um, and I, I mean, I, I think making the accusation in the first place was dumb. But whatever at all and clarifying a technicality if that clarification was her first response it would be petty but fine her initial response though was misleading and manipulative of her larger audience and more importantly once again it encourages people to theorize and speculate and fill in the gaps with whatever assumptions they can make which is what she wants probably right i know what else is misleading. she wants people to like project their own experiences onto it so they feel bad for her because we're all in this together chat Leading, she turns her nose up at the help that they received saying unlicensed tiktok dating coaches are not therapists Check your notes, guys. It was a specialist she chose. She never refutes this major claim from Gus, despite going out of her way to... Very strange. Very, very strange. Huh. Clarify semantics. So... I don't even understand why she continued to go harder and harder on him after he apologized. Like, it's just... It's literally just spite. It's literally just spite. And, I mean, it seems like karma got her in the end because her channel's dead, but seriously... <laughs> this coach was someone she picked and paid $200 a session for. That is the cost of a Switch Lite. That is half of the cost of a cheap Steam Deck. That is almost the cost. I like that his comparison. <laughs> I like that his comparison is immediately like video games. And you just see, you just see in the background. I don't know if you guys can see that, but what do you see behind chat there, huh? What do you see behind chat? Oh, <laughs> Dr. Soy is in the building and we do love it. We do love it. Of my mid-range monitor. Insert a non-gaming example here. Why did you pick? Um, what can you give for $200, chat? You can probably get a Baldo, the thing that uh, Nick Riccata used for 200 bucks, right? I assume. That's definitely something you can get. 
for 200 bucks. Why is someone in chat saying Sneeko's being charged with manslaughter? No, he's not. Good meme, though. But no, he definitely was not. I did not believe that. Looking up Sneeko on Twitter is such a cesspit. I hate it. Anyhow, jumping back into the allegations. <clears throat> it's a specialist that costs as much, if not more, than a licensed therapist if it doesn't count. Her yeah, I mean, it's just it's such a dishonest interpretation, right? And she probably thought she could just get away with it because the audience was on her side. Her own argument literally comes down to either she's full of it, she's stupid, don't worry, guys, I'm going to use the same word as a possibility for Gus later, or she's incredibly fortunate and has no concept of money. Either way, there is no reasonable interpretation of this that leaves her looking good when considering her initial statement. Also I mean, even if you have no concept of money, like, if you pick a person to, like, do couples counseling in some way, even if they're not, like, a verified therapist, like, and you pay them 200 bucks, you have to know that you're paying for something to happen, right? 1,000%. Sneak up is not being charged with manslaughter. Stop saying this shit in my chat. Stop the misinfo. Stop the misinfo. You're making me look this up. This is not true. Also, Gus wanted to be polygamous? Honestly, that, that's really hurtful if it's not what you want. I mean, I would be crushed if my partner wanted that. But why are you disclosing what was said in a therapy-like setting? Semantics aside, the point of your session was to create a safe space where you can be vulnerable and assess your relationship. Outing the details of that is a dick move, and a significant number of people took issue with this. And before some- Yeah, so obviously the real intention was not to create a safe space and vent her trauma. It was a vindictive move to get back at her boyfriend, who after they broke up, continued to be successful, and she did not. Which is why she was upset at him. That's what happened, chat. One uses the word abuse to justify her actions as without straw men there'd be way fewer people defending her uh wanting to be polygamous is not abusive attempting to coerce your partner into this based on my very limited understanding of abuse because i'm a youtube commentary creator not a psychologist or social worker so it would be deeply irresponsible for me to throw around terms that i'm not specifically educated on right guys right other creators but once coercion is involved based on my understanding yeah that would be abusive not her accusation though the reason but can't she just break up with him like can't she just leave him they don't have a child right the child died so can't you just, like, if your partner is trying to get you to be in an open relationship, like, that's, and you don't want to do that, obviously that's a shitty thing for them to do, but you can just, like, break up with them, and then you're, you're like, it's fine, right? Like, it's, you don't have to be with that guy. You can just leave, I assume, unless there's something I'm missing. The reason I call this out, too, is it seems hypocritical for a very pro-sex, pro-therapy, and safe space person to divulge what was discussed in a safe space and to reduce polyamory to f***ing other people, because now you're in a situation where you can make those things look bad. That said, she does bring up a somewhat valid point, and it would be very misleading to not bring this up from Gus's video, so I'm just gonna play the clip. This medical situation happened over three years ago, and we continued to date for a few more years after that happened. And during those few years, we talked about this medical time a lot, and we sought couples therapy together and, and individual therapy, and, and this was discussed at length. Now, technically, he didn't lie. He said the situation three years ago has been discussed at length. <laughs> he technically doesn't say that it was discussed at length in couples therapy. The structure of the sentence could... I mean, I'm not saying you should just take his word for it, but, like, he could be telling the truth, and she's just not, right? Like, that's possible. We don't, we don't really know. We, we weren't there, so it's, it's, we, we just don't know, right? Like, I wouldn't just trust Sabrina's interpretation here. Technically, I mean, it happened in individual therapy or outside of therapy. This is pedantic. Well, I appreciate the fact he's at least going deep into every possible allegation, right? Like, I like that. Because <laughs> if he doesn't, people can hit him with a, what about that? What about that? So at least he went into everything, right? He covered every base. <clears throat> therapy as well but that's semantics which i called sabrina out for so let's just be clear my interpretation of that statement when i originally saw his video was that they discussed this issue in couples therapy it is also worth mentioning that the therapy sessions took place in 2021 right before they broke up three years after sabrina's medical ordeal so it's not like they were going right after it happened or according to their receipts at least hey look the whole point of this video is to cut through the bs here and that includes gus's even if in my opinion it's still ultimately semantics and ultimately resulted in her coming out looking worse because if there's more to this story such as if gus was an abusive partner throughout their relationship it makes it look like she's grasping at straws as opposed to on a smoking gun. Now at this point, she was getting a bit of backlash for misleading the tens of thousands of people trusting her, right? Just for fun, just for fun. Let's rethink what happened months ago when this exact thing happened. Last autumn, once she received backlash for being misleading. Why the, what does the Pokemon card mean? It, am I a moron? Why is there a Pokemon card here? She released a statement saying that she's done talking about this because it's bad for women. Not at all because she It's bad for women? I feel like if your story's not straight, that's worse for women, right? I feel like coming out about something that didn't need to be made public is bad for women also. <laughs> Come on. 
she looks bad in the situation. This is always the explanation, too. I can't respond anymore. This is bad for black people. Like, what, what the f*** are you talking about? You made an allegation. Respond. Yeah, that was already pretty flimsy, so it's a good thing she wouldn't do the same exact thing with a new excuse like, I don't know, like mental health, right? Come on! And bafflingly, her final statement is... Wait, the what was that statement? I'd like to address the situation with Gus for the final time. When I uploaded my video last October, my intention was to share a story as part of my own healing and hopefully to be better understood by peers, audience, friends. I didn't name Gus and I didn't intend for things to evolve the way they have. I mean, but you personally like supported people talking about him. You, when he apologized after he was named by you basically because of your tweets, you were like, oh, well, you know, his apology is lies. So like it was, oh. whether it was your intention or not, like that's what happened, right? Like, come on. Like you did this to yourself. Had I become a member, you got to do it on a PC. <laughs> and bafflingly, her final statement is the most misleading and hypocritical thing she's put out thus far, and it's kind of infuriating. So I'm gonna go line by line and point out the many inconsistencies that she used. Hey everyone, I'd like to address the situation with Gus for the hopefully final time. Hopefully implies she was forced to address it at all since her original video. Gus has literally made zero statements against her. She has chosen to call him out with flimsy claims, only to back down when called out. When I uploaded- Yeah, once again, always playing the victim. It's always not her fault, right? She just wanted to share her story. It's just a coincidence that she named him after the fact. And she won't even take responsibility for that here and the way it probably affected his career. I mean, it did. He lost friendships over it. He probably lost other connections. He lost a lot. In my video last October, my intention was to share my story. Every time Gus or myself address the situation, it leaves a pit in my stomach. Therapy has not helped, but navigating the situation is difficult and stressful nonetheless. The apology message and recent apology video are not sufficient and don't accurately reflect my experience. But I personally need to accept that true accountability may never come. It may never come for me or you. Story as a part of my own healing and hopefully to be better understood by peers, audience, friends, etc. I didn't name Gus in that video and I didn't intend for things to evolve the way they have. My goal wasn't to vilify my ex, but share a very real struggle of mine that, at the time, felt invisible. She confirmed it was him within six hours and did so on both Twitter and YouTube. Not exactly. Exactly. So, like, if she had never confirmed it, like, whatever. She probably didn't need to tell that story. It probably would affect his career anyway, but at least she would have that defense, right? But she did name him. She was okay with it, and now she's, like, walking back. She's like, oh, I never named him. You are full of shit, Sabrina. Abelina, Sabrina. Okay, you're full of shit. You're a loser. You're nothing. You're nothing. Not to mention, she has liked dozens of tweets of people bashing dozens. him. Dozens! Including tweets that pit him and the best friend friend slash creative partner he lost as a result of this against each other either way sabrina's goal yes was to vilify her ex uh, there's nothing wrong with that either but to have that be your actually you know miles new song now objective and try to deny that by weaponizing the very real issues you were trying to advocate for is di wait what does scott's microphone have to do with this the very real issues you were trying to advocate for is disgusting and try to dear adam dahlberg aka net nobody okay great example of someone exposing their abuser without turning it into drama okay yeah i would generally agree with that <laughs> I would generally agree. To deny that by weaponizing the very real issues you were trying to advocate for is disgusting. Next line. Since then, there have been public statements, but no attempt to reach out to me privately. I could rant about this line for 20 But like, you could have reached out to him privately before you made the public statement, right? Like, if you never did that, why should Gus be expected to do that? I assume that's what he's about to say. We're probably going to repeat ourselves. But like, you made it public in the first place. He, he's going to have a public response. What the f minutes, but I won't. Believe it or not, I'm being a good boy today. Some people online were saying that this was really the smoking gun, that Gus never reached out to her. Are you kidding me? Let's operate under the assumption that Gus was an abuser, as Sabrina refuses to say, but clearly has no issue with others saying. So you want your abuser to directly contact you in response to you retaliating to his abuse. Wouldn't that be triggering since this is a situation you've said you're working through in therapy? Also, why would he reach out privately? The fact that she even said that comes off as so spoiled and entitled. You made a video openly calling him out. Why does he have to contact her, but she didn't contact him before making the original? True. Lucky strikes for the ports. Um, Probably lucky strikes. They're a, little, they're, they're a little better. I don't see them sold where I am, though. When I smoke uh, menthols recently, though, I smoke Camel Crush. They're my favorite, undoubtedly. The top of the totem pole. I gotta stop smoking, though. I'm gonna get cancer. I'm gonna actually be what Boogie wishes he was. <clears throat> Video. Seriously, Sabrina, would your actions not imply that him directly contacting you would be perceived as a threat? Especially because contacting you privately would mean it remains a he said, she said situation that you could twist? But no, no, no. Sabrina. Oh, shit. Someone made an N-word streamer. 
tier list. Let's see here. So it looks like I'm not on it. Obviously, because I have never set it, right? I'm not on this anywhere. So I think it's clear that I never set it, right? Yeah, I didn't make the list. So I didn't say it. More proof that I'm innocent of saying the N-word. Didn't happen. It's all AI. It's all AI uh, false mainstream media leftist lies, okay? Sabrina, he should absolutely trust you. You would never reveal the private details of a conversation between you two. Lamau. Right? Therapy has helped, but navigating the situation is difficult and stressful. So now you did have therapy, apparently? I thought before you never went to couples therapy. Less. Nice unnecessary buzzword. Mentioning therapy tends to make people much more sympathetic of your actions, and that's something that is very easy to use to manipulate people. But what would ever call someone out for that, right? Call it a low blow if you want, but her mentioning therapy accomplished nothing in this statement other than making it more sympathetic. The apology message and recent apology video are not sufficient and don't accurately reflect my experience. Other than the therapy receipts, Gus has not refuted a single thing she has said. Please, someone tell me what did not reflect her experience when neither of the statements she's referring to contradicted her once. I personally need to accept that true accountability may never come. When are you doing a collaboration with Turkey Tom? That guy is evil. Never. Sabrina, what the f*** does accountability look like? Since September of 2021, Gus has lost a long-term relationship, not one, not two, or three, but four sources of income, not to mention the fact that his reputation is irreversibly damaged. Yeah, he'll bounce back from this financially, but his reputation as a Mr. Rogers of YouTube is gone. Not a single large creator is associating with him anymore, and his- And that's what she wanted to happen, if I had to guess. She was not okay with him having a career. She was not okay with him being seen as a nice guy, and she wanted to weigh in and show that he wasn't a nice guy. She got a twofer. She got to talk about her trauma and she got to help ruin his career and then pretend that she didn't at all. His best friend and comedy partner severed ties with him. Not to mention his brother was harassed because of you despite having nothing to do with the situation, which I'm going to get to. And he has lost more subscribers than Sabrina even has. She even took the dog. Like what is left, dude? I'm not saying you need to pity him, but what does accountability possibly look like if this isn't it? And if you mean him wanting to sleep with other people or you not being satisfied with his actions during your rhinoplasty, that's right, I learned how to pronounce it, recovery, those are the only two accusations that took place within the last three years, and guess what? You broke up with him. How do you think the world works? Gus was a bad boyfriend, we got it. Do you think every bad boyfriend or girlfriend has to be thrown in jail? Like, seriously. Well, if you date Sabrina, she probably wants that to happen, yes. She wants your career to be and she wants nobody to ever watch you again. What's going on in your head? How does the world work in there? Also, has she ever apologized for this publicly? Like, has she ever made a statement being like, I feel bad for this? I'm sorry. I would guess not. Because she didn't get that much pushback, right? Her video got a million views. Jimmy Robbins' videos combined probably got 300, 400,000 views total, right? Want to hear Disgusting. a joke? A straight white man is about to remind Sabrina of her privilege. I know. Funny. You are so privileged to have a platform of your size. Not to mention the fact that you received your platform as a result of your association with other creators. Seriously, at 200k, she had Jax Films in a video as a guest. I wonder who Jax Films was friends with when that video was- Gui is CIA, his government plant. I agree with that. Yeah, what? Why does she even have a career in the first place? Because her channel died so hard. What are her most popular videos? Oh, she had a video five years ago. This oh, it was it was with Gus. It was with Gus. Okay, obviously. Why YouTubers will never be happy. Hold on. Let's see this video. Is Gus in this one? I can really get lost out here. I try to get out here like. <laughs> Two times a day, three times if it's not raining. But Looks like she made this one on her own. Maybe, maybe he helped write it. When your coworker gets promoted to manager. Let's see, I can count and okay, I- Okay, so she did have a few videos pop off, actually. I take that back a little bit. But her channel died hard. Collab with Pinely, collab with Nick is not green. Collab with whoever these people are. Interesting. <laughs> Why does this guy look like a chunky wang? Uh, I, I don't know. Ask him. Say, Jimmy, why do you look like Chunky Wang? Also not Asian. Was released. Do you know the privilege that that is? Especially when the networking and clout came from someone else. I'm not saying her platform is unearned or that she slept her way up because... I'm not a pig, but I am saying she had to work significantly less hard than tons of people with a fraction of what she has, and I don't even mean myself, dude. And then after breaking up with Gus, you were able to turn this platform that he helped you build against him, make his actions public knowledge, and make it so that for the foreseeable future, every time he checks a notification, it is going to be someone telling them how much they hate him. D do you know how many women, how many victims of abuse, which you're presenting yourself as- Actual victims of abuse, by the way. Not people who had a shitty boyfriend. <sighs> 
would kill to have their abusers suffer even one of the countless consequences I outlined. You have the audacity to feel entitled to more? I know I keep using this word, but how spoiled can you get? If your intention is not to ruin your ex's life, what the hell more can you ask for? Thus far, my instinct has- Alright, so from this, I'm curious, we've gotten most of the meat here. The Gus Johnson interview that changed everything. Okay, hour and 15 minutes on this one. But oh, there's a lot here. There's a lot here, alright. So this seems like the real, the real drama video. <laughs> You can be a bad partner without being a criminally or colloquially abusive partner. People who don't understand this are diminishing the experience of people who experience real trauma. I mean, she definitely was traumatized by the situation. I just don't think she was traumatized by Gus. And I don't think that it needed to be made public at all. Whatsoever. And I could be wrong somehow, but unless there's something huge I'm missing here that I should be made aware of, I, I, I don't think this needed to be made public at all. Literally at all. Or at least until Sabrina can't help herself again, at which point I'm back to square one. All right, in fairness, I was wrong. Uh, Gus started at this time. And as for Sabrina, well, we'll get to that. Look, I've already made two videos on the situation by now. Hi, Gus's subreddit. Hope you've been well. And those two videos total about an hour in runtime, where I am primarily making the argument that Sabrina's actions throughout this controversy have been manipulative and misleading towards the public. It's not required viewing- Will you consider switching to Linux? No. If you're familiar with the situation, but I'm going to come off a bit harsher without that context because I simply can't sit here and rehash an hour worth of arguments. But if you want the most straightforward example of what I'm talking about, Sabrina made a video where she discussed her ectopic pregnancy in 2018, which is what started this whole situation. If you didn't know that, you shouldn't be watching, but... During this video, she talks about the lack of support that she received from an unnamed ex-boyfriend and shares out-of-context experiences that, yeah, make him look real bad. Sounds like a real jerk to- They always make these shitty memes, too. Gus the type of guy who goes out for beers while his girlfriend is dying. Lol. Me. And she has at least twice cited not really what happened either. This decision to keep that boyfriend anonymous as proof that her motives here are good and she didn't make that video in order to spite an ex-boyfriend so she should be shielded from criticism. Despite the fact that she confirmed that the boyfriend was Gus Johnson within six hours on both Twitter and YouTube, endorsed literally dozens of inflammatory statements that changed her accusations, and as we just found out, she attempted to reunite with this boyfriend just three weeks before Whoa. the original video went she did? live, at which point he rejected her. Wait, where is the evidence for that? Wait, is that in the video I missed? Where is that? She tried to get back with him three weeks before? Is it this one? We watched this one. Correct I need, a, I need a control F for three weeks because I did not see that. Where the f*** is this three weeks thing? I said an interview Gus did. Okay, so it's in there. If for statements he... that Hold on. changed her accusations. And as we just found out, she attempted to reunite with this boyfriend. Oh, okay, as we just found out. So he's talking about it being in the interview itself. Okay, that's where apparently that happened. Okay, I didn't realize that. My bad. Um, We'll keep, we'll keep... We'll keep enjoying this one. Friend, ...just three weeks before the original video went live, at which point he rejected her. If none of what I just said causes you to have an open mind about the situation, that's fine. Leave your dislike and stop watching, because I'm not going to be good enough to convince you, and that's okay. Also, I'm going to be reading off my monitor. Sorry, this is a really delicate topic, so my wording really matters here. But as you probably know by now, after the original video went live, Gus tweeted an apology statement that Sabrina publicly refused to accept, in a way that caused her to be called out. By the way, Jimmy, there's a little bit of a uh, gristle, a little bit of a grussle on your mic. Please fix that. I assume, I think he did in recent videos, I haven't heard it, but please, <laughs> please use noise cancellation. <laughs> I thought he quit. No, he's, he's still around. <sighs> I don't really watch his shit. I've seen a few of his videos and I thought they were all right, but I don't really, uh, I don't know. There's not my kind of content. He still posts and gets decent views, it looks like. Does he post on any other channels? Or is it just, uh, just this channel? I know uh, Jimmy Robbins said he lost four streams of income. I assume it was all collab stuff then, right? Uh, for being misleading, but I'll get to that. He then goes into radio silence and then releases a poorly received sketch that seemed like it might have been a shot at Sabrina. Eventually, Gus releases a formal video apology. Sabrina then accuses him of fabricating <coughs> events in said apology, so he responds by proving said events. Sabrina then changes her criticism by saying that she had a problem with the semantics of how he described that event, despite her original accusation being a fabrication of events, which... I don't know, I would consider that to be a slightly more serious accusation. She discloses the topics discussed during their couple's counseling, which, don't do that, guys. That's not cool. But for the most part, that recaps everything, except not at all, but let's focus on what's recent. Recently, this video is like two months late, huge Twitch streamer Pay Money Wubby hosted a stream where he was discussing the situation in response to a TikTok covering it. But that TikTok had a lot of misinformation and bad arguments that are commonly stated online, such- D D Fault got banned. <clears throat> D D Fault got banned. Gus Johnson. Man, I would hate to have the TikTok audience on my dick.
<laughs> I'll just go on TikTok and look up Gus Johnson. Wow, what an amazing video. Gus Johnson allegation. Let's look that up and see what we get. Can we find the one? Searching for the one. This could be the one. DD f up. Not going to be able to find it. Looks like not. All right, we'll watch this one. Well, YouTubers, I stand before I realized they were problematic. It makes me want to cry. You dumb. I loved you. I loved you. I loved you. It's true. I wanted to be you. And Get me out. Hey, guys, I know I usually just post about anime and stuff like that, but something else happened online recently that kind of rocked me. So I wanted to talk about that. Now, if, like me, you're a fan of the YouTube commentary general, you probably know Gus Johnson. He's got a couple million followers on YouTube, and he goes viral on Reddit and on TikTok. They call it the YouTube commentary general? Who is the general? Is Curtis Connor the general? Is Gus Johnson the admiral? Former admiral? Or does he just mean community is the word for general now? What the f*** is this? Talk all the time. So, yeah, he's pretty well known. If you haven't watched Sabrina's video about her pregnancy... Are you of Yakubian descent? I am. Pregnancy and the issues she... Cranial had. dimensions? You can just tell. My head looks like a corn nut. Here's a cigarette or two for the wig. I thank you, bro. Appreciate it, Toaster. I highly suggest you go and watch it. Um, I did. It was very bad. emotionally vulnerable, and she tells a lot about her experience, and my heart really goes out to her. It's <laughs> my heart goes out to her, you cornball sounds incredibly difficult and i can't imagine what it was like essentially what happened is during her recent rhinoplasty surgery according to her what happened according to her that's what happened and during her pregnancy a few years ago her uh boyfriend at the time gus was incredibly abusive and it's a rhinoplasty it's a no surgery he's not abusive emotionally manipulative and oh, shut up you're stupid bing bong who the f is bing bong Okay, so full disclosure, I have not seen the new Part 6 batch yet. I hate you. I can't watch you. Get out of my sight. Not just the fact that Gus nearly caused Sabrina to die because he was abusive, which, according to the information released so far, is flagrantly incorrect. During the stream, Wubby let several fans call in and debate him on the topic, at one point joking that Gus was welcome to come on the stream and be interviewed. Get Gus on a call? Bro, okay. Hey, Gus, do you want to come on a call and, and publicly share your side of Is Pay Money Wubby cool? I don't know a lot about him. Is this guy, uh, Mr. Mr. Based? Is this guy Mr. 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 Goda with the sauce? I don't I don't know a lot about pay money, Wubby. A story which you've never done up until this point. To Wubby's surprise, Gus came on and participated in an impromptu interview, largely thanks to Wubby's staff helping him come up with questions. This interview included several new pieces of information, the largest of which was that shortly before releasing her video, Sabrina asked Gus to get back together and he rejected her. The day after this interview... To be clear, that's according to Gus. I don't think we should immediately take Gus's word for that. Maybe you could trust him a little more, <laughs> just based on the fact that she's had multiple inconsistencies and he hasn't had nearly as many. But I don't think you should just instantly believe Gus because he said that. But I'm curious what Sabrina said in response. Sabrina responded with her own stream where she accused Gus of fabricating events entirely, in my opinion, using really flawed arguments, but we'll get there. And a kind of big anecdote where she doesn't call him physically abusive, but mentions Thanks, an incident Lizzie. where he tried to grab her phone three years ago and he accidentally grabbed her hair in the process. Look, it's really messy, but I'll cover it properly later. To prevent backtracking, because this video... Why even bring that up? He accidentally grabbed her hair. Is that, is that like physical abuse? What the? F what is even going on? What is going on? What does my fat ass got to do to get that tank top in like 4XX? Any good quality tanks? This is from CZ's World on YouTube. It's a good tank top. Uh, I don't know. Go on his online store. He probably sells it video is already going to be way longer than I want it to be. I'm going to talk about the exclusive takeaway from Gus's interview, then cover the overlap between the two streams, then the exclusive takeaways from Sabrina's stream. Then I'll discuss the discourse surrounding this topic from prolific creators. Donald Scott, thanks for coming to member. And then I will give my take on this entire situation, which I haven't really done yet. Feel free to jump around to what parts of that interest you. The chapters are in the description and in the time bar thing, literally right here. This isn't a substitute for watching either stream, by the way. This is just me contextualizing those two streams <clears throat> against one another, as well as against Twitter and Reddit and my opinion. That said, let's talk about Gus. So Gus eventually calls in and immediately emphasizes that he does not wish to invalidate Sabrina's trauma. In fact, he says this around a dozen times. When he wasn't saying this, the vast majority of the- and I, The thing is like, with a lot of people who say stuff like this, I think it's but I actually believe him just based on the fact that when she made her initial video, Instead of, like, responding and, like, calling out her inconsistencies, he was just like, I'm sorry. He just apologized instantly because he felt—he genuinely felt bad. And he only started going off when she started lying about him, 
She started put like even more rather. She started pushing for him to lose his career opportunities and like encouraging that. Right. Thanks, Mitchell, for coming to member. A lot of Scots in chat today interview is really just Gus doing three things, one of which is what led to there being a part three of this. One, he widely confirms Sabrina's story while acknowledging his own headspace and factors that went into his own decision making, such as loss of sleep caused by Sabrina's anxiety attacks and PTSD episodes, and the fear caused by her threatening <coughs> to not get an abortion despite them originally agreeing otherwise. Basically, the things that he was doing weren't in a vacuum as originally presented, but had missing context. But he never really uses this to make excuses, you know? So he'd say something like, I did some really dumb things because I was being worn down over months and constantly in a state of fear, but that doesn't make my actions okay. And before people say those are excuses, please learn what excuses are. Explaining the circumstances around negative behavior is not an excuse unless you try to use those circumstances as a means. Explanation, we call it, chat. Explanation. Means to normalize your behavior. Criticize Gus. I, I don't care, but please stop saying things that are blatantly untrue when there are things that you can legitimately criticize him for here. The second takeaway from this interview was him acknowledging and correcting a lot of the disinformation that Sabrina hasn't stated, but implied was true on Twitter, despite a lot of this disinformation directly contradicting her story. Other than the Gus almost killed her line, you also have the misconception that he forced her not to tell her friends and family about her pregnancy when she never even implied this in her. Yeah, that's true. So why does she even like that when she didn't even say that? To keep Sabrina suppressed from even her family knowing about things. I mean, in the video, she didn't even say that. She just said that she didn't want to tell her family because she didn't think they would take it well, right? And she gave the example of her sister who was like, let me guess you're pregnant. So she didn't want to, you know, talk about it, right? Like, it's not Gus's fault. She could have just said it. Making her keep silent about forcing her to get an abortion. Did he really force her? Like, she said she wanted it from the beginning. They agreed to it. Her original story and, in fact, stated that she didn't tell her family due to them being judgmental. I called my mom and I just, I lied and I said it was, oh, and a very insist, it's not a big deal, but I just want to let you know what hospital I'm at. Don't come! Because I don't want anybody to find out. I called my sister. Lamau. So why and does I'm she even like that? She just was cool with any allegation being made against him, even when it was untrue or inaccurate, because she was spiteful. And that's it. Like, oh, hey, I'm at the hospital. And the first thing she says in the most judgmental voice is, what, you're pregnant. Oh, that's what I just brought up. Crazy. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> so I also lied to her and told her it was an ovarian cyst. Also, at no point does he accuse her of fabricating any particular event in the original video. And saving the best for last, he added context to their breakup and aftermath that, in my opinion, kind of confirms what I've been saying for months now. We're not at the point where I go into my take on the whole situation yet, but this part was still, yikes. Let's go through these accusations. Yikes. According to Gus, he and Sabrina remained on good terms after they broke up, with him even dog-sitting for her. At one point, she gives him gifts and asks him to get back together. He rejects her, at which point she screams at him and slams his door on her way out. And this took place just three weeks before her original video's release. He also says that while they were together, she never mentioned a desire to make a video talking about her pregnancy, and that he would have been willing to appear in the video owning up to his actions had she asked. But it also makes him look good to say that at this point, and we have no way to know he's being sincere when he says that, so take that with a grain of salt. True. Take it with a grain of salt. You don't want to totally take his side just because he says something's true. Doesn't mean it is. Assault. After her video's release, he claims that she reached out to their mutual friends and contacts in order to pressure them to cutting ties with Gus. Some of these contacts apparently approached Gus and told him she made them uncomfortable. Lastly, Gus said that when he announced on Instagram that he would be canceling his tour due to not finishing- I kind of want to just hear this interview, honestly. <clears throat> Gus Johnson, pay money, wubby. What is this? My best financial advice I'd give you is just like, even though- Alright, go away. Um, I want to hear just the interview in full. Oh, three hours. It's three hours? All right. Well, obviously not all of this is the interview itself, right? Gus Johnson reaches out. Okay, call with Gus. This is well, the last hour or so. If it isn't Gus the abuser Johnson in the flesh. Oh, my goodness. Not the intro I was expecting. I <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to lighten the mood. I'm it's sorry. okay. I understand the tone of the stream. Thank you I, for, so much for calling me. Yes, thank you for 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 talking. I don't even know uh, uh, where to begin, but I'm glad you were watching stream. We, you've been a bit of a conversation piece on the stream for a few months now. Now I can't seem to shake it. It always comes back. I guess I have the hottest take on the internet about this, so I get a lot. The hottest take, which is like the only normal take, honestly. A lot of heat, but uh, sure, I, I understand that. And I just want to start off too. This is not something that I really ever do. Uh, yeah. I, I really appreciate you calling me and talking about this like this. Uh, this is just a really unique, uncomfortable situation for me that I don't usually have any experience with. Uh, so forgive me if, you know, it's, it's a little weird at all, but uh, I just kind of wanted to jump on and just kind of shed a little bit more light on the situation and maybe clarify some of the things that have been out there in the last, like, five, six months or so and just kind of go from there. Who's driving that bus? Uh, good question. But thank you so much for giving me a call, dude. Of course, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do so. I mean, the thing is, is, is like I've been saying, uh, I... Current year. They let them at the front now, chat. 
I do have my own personal opinions on, on everything, but, and this is my stream, so I will share them. It's hard to help it. But what I always come back to is I try not to get too into it without acknowledging that we don't know <laughs> everything. And it's really hard to know everything, especially because your responses have been lackluster at best, right? You haven't said a lot on this. Yeah. We, we, we've, in fact, in my own like, personal work crew, we've, uh, we've had conversations about trying to get you on stream to talk about it, and it gets shut down right then and there because we're like, he's never, he's never going to come on and share. Like, why would he? Right? Yeah. But here you are. Well, I, I do appreciate being here, and, and really, I just want to say up front, too, I, I totally understand this is your stream completely. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you can probably tell right up front, I'm, I'm probably not going to match your energy as much with That's it. That's fine, don't, don't. Uh, I just, uh, I, I would love for an opportunity to kind of, like, share some stuff, I, and I just want people to know up front that my intention here is to not try to discredit or disrespect anybody, but maybe just, like, clear up some common misconceptions that have been out there for a few months. Uh, you know, this has been something that I've had to deal with every day for the last half of the year, and it, it's dominated a lot of my life, so. Bernie Mac? Who is Bernie Mac? Is that, oh, it is him. I recognize him from a movie or something. I don't really know who that is. I just wanted to kind of come in and <laughs> talk a bit about some of it. So, yeah, anything you want to share? I mean, if it, uh, once you get through, you know, certain things you want to touch on, I can ask a couple questions. You can choose to answer them or not. But I want to hear the three weeks part. No transcripts. Never mind. Um, you have the floor. Anything you feel like you want to. Let Thank you. Go for sure, it. I appreciate it. I mean, I just want to say up front, too, uh, the Sabrina situation, like what she had to go through with the ectopic pregnancy, was it was real. It was painful. I was just absolutely so sad that we had to go through this shit. And, and really, I just want to be known, especially as I talk about her in some of these situations, that I do not want to negate or discredit any of the legitimate trauma that she had to go through. Um, I, I can't imagine being in her position. You know, I was very intimately close to her and the situation, but I, I can't imagine being in her position. Uh, it had to be extraordinarily difficult. And, uh, and I just wanted to preface that. Like, I, I don't want to create problems for anybody at all. I don't want to create any hatred or disdain towards any individual. Uh, I just wanted to kind of clarify some things that at this point, you know, in comment sections and stuff have kind of been a little bit more commonplace for folks to reference. And mm -hmm. a lot of things just are not really accurate with how they went down. And I just kind of want the opportunity to do that a little bit. So for sure. Um, I began dating Sabrina when I was uh, 22. I was still a senior in college. Um, and we, we started long distance for many months. And she lived in Portland. I lived in Wisconsin. And um, after we moved, we both moved to Los Angeles. Um, in the fall of that, that same year. And, and we had both been living out here, uh, kind of, you know, like really getting into like actually being, you know, in the same city as each other for like the relationship. We'd really can already tell he's genuine, dude, be careful with that kind of thing. Just cause someone sounds genuine doesn't mean they are genuine to be clear. Generally in this situation, I support Gus. I don't support Sabrina, but be careful with that kind of thing. Cause just cause someone seems genuine doesn't really mean anything. Really been doing, you know, it had been about two or three months. Um, and she got pregnant uh, that fall. Um, she and I had talked a number of times about what would happen if this did, if she did become pregnant. And we had both agreed that since we were really young and uh, didn't really have a lot of our personal life footing in, in order yet, uh, neither of us really had any money uh, when we moved out here. Uh, we both agreed that it was not, uh, uh, we couldn't give a good life to a child. At the and this is something that Sabrina echoes in her own response or her own initial video. She and him both claimed simultaneously that before they uh, were fucking on the reg or whatever, or at some point rather they had a, conversation about the fact that they would not have a child if she if she got pregnant okay that time um so we had agreed that you know if a pregnancy did occur that we would seek termination um un unfortunately she got pregnant and you know i the thing is I, I completely understand too like you can prepare all that you want for a situation like that and nothing really holds full merit until you're in it um uh you know you can prepare all you want but th i understand that that preparations go out the window to some extent when the thing actually does happen um she found that she, that she was pregnant and it terrified both of us um like i said you know we were in a new city uh we were trying a lot of new stuff and um you know i just uh funded the podcast with eddie and we was trying to deliver that on time and, and everything um and there's just a lot going on and we, neither of us had prepared for this what about what they what happened made eddie want to drop him because he was an asshole to sabrina is that is that it i mean that's within his he's within his right to do that but I'm just curious what specifically from his perspective made him want to drop Gus. It was really terrifying. Um, we, we started going to doctor's visits and plan. That also being said, in a reasonable society, nobody considers terminating an ectopic pregnancy and abortion. Well, that's true, but uh, they were planning to get an abortion and then the ectopic pregnancy happened, right? And parenthood together. Uh, this to happened three years before they broke up? Yes, it did. To look at our next options. And it really worried me right away. Um, that Sabrina began to express a change of her mind in regards to what we would do with the kid. Um, and, you know, she was kind of in between jobs and stuff at the time, and she just kind of fully changed her mind on that. Um, and, and I didn't deal with that in a very mature way. Um, I, I was really f fearful. And um, I just, you know. The thing is, like, how else can you respond then to be like, get rid of that kid? Mossberg and type situation, right? Like, how, how else can you react realistically? Like, if beforehand they were like, we're not going to have a kid, and then when she gets pregnant, she's like, oh, maybe I actually want to have it. Like, what she herself said, like, I, 
Is he supposed to respond like, oh, actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to have a, I'm going to be a father. I'm cool with that now. You know, I just told her I wasn't ready for this. I, I feared suck. that it would create a big problem for us in the relationship. And, and I just expressed that with her at the time. Um, but ultimately the uh, decision of what to do was taken away from both of us though. When she was diagnosed with an ectopic pregnancy, um, we didn't know this diagnosis at all until, uh, really late in the process. I know that she shared in her own video too, that, um, you know, she uh, went to the doctors a number of times before this diagnosis. I joined her on a number of these uh, trips as well. Uh, the knowledge that we had at the time, um, she was she was spotting uh, at home, and, and some doctors had told us that it was most likely a miscarriage, that she might be uh, processing this naturally and, and might have it pass at home and to come in if there are any further issues. Um, that was the knowledge that we were operating under at the time. Um, on the, the day that a lot of people seem to have been referencing in the comments of various things and stuff in the last few months, uh, I had made a podcast obligation uh, with a guest to film that evening. Um, we had just started the podcast and gotten it off the ground, and I just felt a lot of pressure to deliver to the people that had crowdfunded that and to deliver to Eddie. And this is me taking full responsibility for that decision. It's not Eddie or anybody else, you know, that caused that. I just, I just chose to stick behind and, and honor that obligation. Um, she told me that she was going to the hospital, um, and I told her I would join her as soon as I was done. At, at that time, neither of us still knew that it was an ectopic pregnancy. Yeah, like keep in mind, once again, like he didn't have any reason to believe it was something serious. She'd already been like five times, so he couldn't have known that. She was having an, an, an ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy. Like, there was no reason for him to necessarily believe that. So, like, do I... Do I think he acted a little shitty? Like, maybe. But, like, at that moment, I think it makes sense for him to prioritize the crowdfunded podcast. We had no idea the, the emergency situation that was in effect. That was neither of us. Um, I joined her at the hospital that evening, and uh, we both got the diagnosis that it was ectopic, and it had to be removed right away. Um, and I... I I stayed with her during the surgery and took her home after. Uh, but that was that order of events as, as it happened. Um, anyway, I don't know if, if you wanted to jump in at all. Yeah, I was, I was just letting you, you know, say what you wanted to say. Uh, sure, I think I, that, I that, that. that's that's that. Uh, I, I noticed that in, in, from what I've seen online as well, that she even mentions you were doing something for work. But I've, I've realized the more this gets brought up, the meme of, he, you know, he went out for drinks instead of, uh, you know, and nearly killed me is what I've been saying. We, we responded to a video today of someone saying that you were, uh, you know, nearly responsible for her death. Um, which I'm seeing perpetuated. Which um, is not true at all. 1,000% not true at all. She's in the hospital with the doctors. Gus is not going to make the doctors act faster or something like that. Like, <laughs> she's in the hospital. And I'm assuming that's something you... How do you feel about that, rather? Um, I mean, like I said, I, I really... I only wanted the best for her the entire time. I had no idea. Neither of us had any idea how serious the situation was. Um, going into this entire medical situation, I had never... I, I think there might have been maybe one time in my adult life at that point that I had been to the doctors myself. Mm -hmm. um, I was not really familiar with the medical field at all. Um, and, you know, after going to a handful of these doctor's appointments, uh, both together and then her some as well, uh, we, we figured out stuff as we went. I mean, I just had no experience in this area. Um, and just going into the actual ectopic surgery, you know, like we are, had already been to the doctor a number of times. I just, I really just didn't know what I was doing when I was really young and just kind of listening to whatever the doctor. Yeah, I think it's a totally fair explanation. I'm going to go back to Jimmy Robbins video now to get some more clarity on the entire because obviously Sabrina responded to whatever he said there, right? So I want to see this entire thing, basically. Finishing his show as a result of everything happening, Sabrina tweeted, quote, that showbiz baby within an hour. Now, I can't confirm if it was within the hour, but it was within the same day. Now, onto the overlap. Sabrina confirms that she asked Gus to get back together three weeks before her video is released. So she confirmed it! She confirmed it! And admits to asking him to get back together, not because she <laughs> loved him and wanted him back, but because it was a more comfortable environment for her to deal with her trauma and for closure. What are you talking about, bro? Thanks for the five, Jackie. True. It was a more comfortable environment to deal with my trauma. So the but so then you, after that, you decided the most comfortable thing would be to talk about it on YouTube. Does that make any sense? Because somehow she thought that was a better look than wanting to get back together because of love. Like when we you look like you drive a Geo Metro. Well, week we were looking at houses to get together, and the next week, um, I'm living alone in a hotel trying to handle my PTSD because one of the things about it was that I couldn't sleep alone. So I was starting to reconsider, like. Oh so my get a new boyfriend instead of using him to emotionally validate you. Gosh, was was this a mistake? Because at least I knew how to like maneuver in in that life. I really didn't actually picture us getting back together, but in my mind, I think I just wanted to know that I tried my best, that I did everything that I possibly could, and then it would like be out of my hand. I will also note that Gus stated that he paid for the majority of her living expenses while they were living together. Something she's confirmed. Now I'm not trying to. Lamau to say that that's why she wanted him back, I'm saying that it certainly was an additional benefit to their relationship. But despite that confirmation, she refused to claim that she screamed at him or slammed the door. And her evidence is her dog was with her and she and Gus were still cordial after this happened. Oh, so the dog knows. Well, you say that you and Gus were still cordial after he... 
almost let you die or whatever the fuck you think. So that doesn't really work, right? Like you can't really use that excuse now. You dated for three years after the ectopic pregnancy, which was so traumatic and evidence of his abuse as you liked tweets on Twitter, confirming apparently okay. So this excuse doesn't really work. Happens because someone getting emotional once means you can never be polite again, I guess. Look, I have no issue with her setting the record straight in any way that she wants to, but she uses very weak arguments and out of context messages as definitive proof of her claims. Like she'll accuse him of fabricating events, act like she's able to provide proof, doesn't, and then says, so I think you know he's lying. Dude, just say he- I don't think I do at all. It seems like you're lying, Sabrina. He lied. Like, if you're a trustworthy person who doesn't have a pattern of misleading people, why would a community of people that universally believed and supported you on day one doubt you for even a second? Oh. But in this case, she uses the brief exchange between her and a friend as evidence that I guess she didn't care enough about the outcome of the conversation to scream. Even though he apparently helped her cope with PTSD, she, she didn't care. Okay, whatever. And by the way, this conversation that proves beyond a doubt she wouldn't scream at him basically boiled down to, the relationship sounds bad for you. Why do you want to get back with him? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure every single adult has been on both sides of this conversation, including when they've wanted to get back with their partner, but... Hey Tom, I don't know if any financial payment system is linked, but you're one of my favorite creators. Love the consistent uploads and hilarious takes. Most base individual on this website. Uh, well, thank you. I mean, if you want, you can just super chat me if you want to pay me or whatever. Um, yeah. Just drop that, drop that super chat. Thank you for the 10. I appreciate it, bro. Whatever. She also says that her friends can confirm that she doesn't raise her voice. So, okay, well, a lot of... Turns out there's something worse than dating a fan. Dating someone before you were famous, only for them to try to f*** up your career when things end. Yeah, this is, like, my concern with dating now, bro. This is my concern with dating. Like, if I'm an a to a girl, is she gonna come out and say I abused her or something? You, know, you just never know, bro. You never know. People can say that Gus was a stand-up guy, so I guess that means he didn't do anything wrong because his friends say so. We now know it is impossible to abuse someone behind closed doors. I mean, come on, do you see how dumb these are? Hey, Tom, Katy Perry dropped a new music video and Trisha is oiled up. No. No way. I gotta see this. Woman's world? Oh my god. Alright, let's just skip to Trisha Paytas oiled up. How'd she even get in this? She's fat. Oh no. 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 She is literally oiled up. She's literally oiled up. What is going on here, chat? <clears throat> Very dark. Katie looks good, though. Just saying. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nick, that's very dark. You didn't need to drop that on me. I'm traumatized. I'm posting Twit Longer and video sponsored by Fabulous. Arguments are? I'm sorry, but this is just a pet peeve of mine. Don't make arguments if you're not arguing anything. Just stick to making statements as Gus did. And before people mention how some online were asking for evidence from Sabrina in order to take her seriously, one, those people are wrong, but two, this was just all really weak to me in general. She presented the weirdest and most random things as if they were pictures of bruises and voice recordings when they were really nothing. And also, I don't think most people cared about her screaming at him when he rejected her. Personally, I was way more shocked that she asked for him back three weeks before she drudged up events from three years ago the way that she did, but whatever. In response to saying she pressured mutual friends to cut ties with Gus, she says she did it, but don't worry, once again there's proof. The proof being, she asked her friends if they felt pressured and her friends told her they didn't, so that means he lied. Even though that is the exact same evidence he used for his claim, but somehow her using the same evidence is more convincing, I guess. She also said that the That Showbiz tweet coming out on the same exact day that he cancelled his tour was a coincidence because she was watching old movies or something. You liar. Sure. I'm sorry, look, my problem here is that as a complete outsider who knows neither of these people, I have been able to find multiple instances of Sabrina contradicting herself, changing her accusations, or being misleading. That really hasn't been the case here for Gus, so when now there are examples of the two of them giving conflicting information- Any word on Ida's making a doc about you? He has not reached out. <laughs> as far as I've seen. So no. <laughs> conflicting facts, I personally find myself believing the person who hasn't been playing these games here. Like, if you know that the truth is enough to make the other person look bad or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish here, because apparently it's not that, why are you repeatedly making misleading statements? This is when that kind of thing catches up with you, you know? Yeah, I would recommend some people taking another look at the boy who cried wolf. It seems relevant here. Anyway, that's her response to the accusation, so let's talk about the stream itself. You know, when I saw on Reddit that Sabrina was streaming a response where she was showing old messages between her and Gus, I accepted the fact that I was going to have to retract an hour of content on my channel because she finally had the bombshell that she's been sitting on for six months and- Yeah, I'm sure she totally destroyed you, bro. 
and for some reason hasn't used until now. Good news, guys. I don't have to retract anything, either because I am perfect or because the stream did not go well. Take your pick. She, of course... Is it just me, or did this feel really off, especially the first half? So smug and condescending really doesn't play well with the narrative. I'm sorry, but Sabrina has a textbook, mean girl, attitude, and mannerisms. Of course, came uh. with accusations of her own that I'll get to, <laughs> but first, I want to talk about the general tenor of the stream. In my opinion, it was weird, and a lot of people even expressed the opinion that she came off as, like, smug and vindictive because she was smiling Lamau. and all that, and I don't know. I thought she was, like, sad a day ago. Body language is such a hard thing to read, you can make your own opinions, but for me, it was more the fact that a lot of what she says comes off as really hypocritical. For example, she says that her being harassed with what she calls false claims is completely unacceptable, but... That's what happened to Gus for six months. And she enabled it. But she didn't make false claims. She told the truth. It's just a coincidence that Gus had contradictory evidence. It's a coincidence that she was cheering on his career, dying. Like, that's, I mean, that's just a, that's a coincidence, right? She told the truth. By liking dozens of tweets that were doing exactly that. So why is harassment suddenly bad? To my knowledge, she never discouraged people to stop harassing Gus until public opinion began to turn against her. And I'm going to say it again, she encouraged people to harass Gus with incorrect information that made him look bad. Like, who's enabling harassment? The one that liked dozens of critical tweets about the other, including tweets that pit him and his former best friend against each other? I am never letting that one go. Dude, these tweets are crazy. I hate these people. Let me zoom out so you can read these. This is actually insane, but I've always liked Eddie so much better, and I'm glad my animal instinct is correct. Abilie Sabrina, I love you, girl. We don't know each other, but I'm here for you. Genuinely sorry you have to go through learning your best friend is a terrible person. You two bounce off each other like no one else. We'll miss it, but it's better this way. Lamau. Yo, what's up? What, what's up, SFO? What's up? Uh, we're going over the Gus Johnson allegations, which I've never looked into. And uh, it seems like uh, Abilene and Sabrina was full of shit. Definitely a cool thing to look into if you want to hop on uh, to this story at some point. <laughs> or the guy who broke his silence after six months. Are we really going there, bros? Actually looking into Twitter likes? Well, okay. Let me say this, okay? Typically, I would say that looking into Twitter likes too much is dumb, okay? Especially if the content of what you're liking is like whatever, okay? Like, I'll like a lot of memes on Twitter, and some people will probably be like, oh, Tom, that shows what you truly believe, like, okay? In this case, she made a specific allegation about someone that she knew. She publicized it. She was cheering on his career dying and she was then liking tweets which promote misinformation about it right so in my opinion that is something worthy to call out okay because she is basically endorsing it by liking that tweet first of all and twitter likes were public at the time so anybody could see that and by that same token she is complaining about gus responding to her okay so so from my perspective it's okay to call her over twitter likes in this case Thanks for explaining. No worries. That's that's what I'm here for. Generally, when I say Twitter likes are a big deal, no, I wouldn't give a shit. But in this specific situation, like she made an allegation against him, people are posting misinformation about him and she's liking it. And like, obviously people are going to read into that in a certain way, right? By even liking it, by the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you like something, it might pop up on uh, your followers' timeline and they're going to see it more. But she gets to like wash away any responsibility. Like all I did was like it, you know? You know? Like, here's a super weird clip that shows what I mean. Only gonna do what was gonna bring me peace. But I Did it really bring you peace? <laughs> Did it? I haven't had that today. Or since last night. You know, I could, I could have people calling me a liar. I could have people harassing me. But the combo, it's just... Uh, I can't, can't, can't have the combo. Can't have the combo and be quiet. Mm-mm. mm, -mm. mm, -mm, mm, -mm. She also tells Gus to keep her name out of his mouth and that he forced her to do this stream. I hate her mannerisms. <laughs> when this is the first time in six months that he escalated the situation. Every other time- You escalated by making it fucking public, you dumb bitch! You escalated by making it public in the first place. He has a right to respond. Especially, like, he can respond at any point in time, keep in mind. He can respond one month later, three years later. He can respond however he wants if he feels like he needs to clear up the narrative. And that's what he did. And now that you're being called into question, you make this stream response. Jesus. Time it was her. I hope that Gus continues to make sketches. Please do. Go stream. Go on Go on tour. Go, go do everything. Just keep my name out your mouth. I keep my name out your mouth after you publicly made an allegation about him? Like, you, you publicized it. You put his name in your mouth. And I know Sabrina's going to claim, oh, I didn't say his name, but you did confirm that it was about him, and that's why everybody was talking about it. 
And when allegations were coming out against him, when there was misinformation even from you, you weren't like, guys, just to clear it up. This is what actually happened. I feel bad for Gus. Don't come after him. You never said that once. You didn't say that once. So shut up. Thank you, Larry Lover, for the dono. I, I just don't, I want this to not happen anymore. Accuse him of what you want, dude, but please stop trying to make arguments, Sabrina, because you are desperately bad at it. She like, is the way to stop someone talking about something to like constantly fuel it, tweet about it, post about it on your Twitter stories or whatever, like tweets that are spreading misinformation about it, like that he prevented you from telling anyone when he didn't even do that. Like, is that the way to stop it or would that prolong it? What do you think, Sabrina? What do you think? Also says this. We have lives off of the internet as well. Wow, how cool are you? And it seems like normally the healthiest thing <sighs> to do is to understand that people, strangers, are not entitled to know every little detail about- Wow, and you totally respect that notion by publicizing this in the first place and then liking people speculating about it and encouraging people to harass him and drop him and being cool with his friends dropping him as a result of it, right? That's like what you're- That makes sense, right? That makes perfect sense. I think you're right. I think you're right. You're, you're based actually, Sabrina, okay? Take another fabulous ad. You're right, but if you're trying to negatively affect someone's reputation with claims that people find flimsy, you are not entitled to support when you have been caught being misleading on multiple occasions despite having the upper hand in the situation. So why would you need to be misleading? But yeah, with that out of the way, let's talk about the new accusations. I recently got to see ADTR. They were awesome. Yeah, they're great, man. They're great. I'll be seeing them in October. Before anyone says I missed anything, a lot of this stream was either repeated information or really was just slightly refuting minor details about things that were said. So unless you want this video to be two hours, I'm gonna focus on entirely new information. Firstly, she implies that Gus and Wubby planned the stream in advance and that the impromptu nature of it was fabricated. And it was all over his- Conspiratorial. Salt of a little seemingly impromptu <laughs> interview yesterday on a popular Twitch streamer's channel. Off the bat, Weird. Like, she's super conspiratorial, bro. She thinks the world is out to get her. And that's, typically when someone does that, it's a sign of projection that they're actually out to get someone else. Like how she collaborated with multiple people, like Nick is Not Green, to uh, seriously up Gus's life. And normally, like, sometimes with allegations, like, even if it's a false allegation, I wouldn't uh, say that the reason they did it is for clout or to ruin their life because some people are just misguided and dumb but in this case in this case based on her behavior it seems very obvious she wanted his career to be hurt she was a lover scorned and she was cool with his career going down the toilet to start especially coming from someone who's wrongfully accused gus of fabricating events in the past also i've been saying this since the beginning nobody cares about her unless gus is brought up yeah imagine how salty she is about that it is super weird to focus on such useless details and speculation if you're sitting on a smoking gun that demonstrates you were a victim of- Are you going to bring us with you while you pee? Real soon. It'll be happening real soon. I was considering, it would probably be fun if I, when I'm streaming, if I like go to get fast food and I like call myself on Discord on my phone so I can like film it, but I don't really want to show where I get McDonald's, so I don't really want to do that. <laughs> Maybe if I'm on vacation sometime, I can do that of abuse during the course of your three-year relationship, at least in my opinion, because that's the problem here. You can make the argument that Gus was neglectful in 2018, but a lot of people aren't convinced that it goes into the territory of abuse. And if it does, many think it doesn't matter if he demonstrated during the three years that followed that he's changed. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think it was abuse. That word is thrown around too much. It's one of those buzzwords that people just like to throw around. Oh, I was abused. It was abusive. It was traumatic. I have PTSD. I don't doubt that she has some form of PTSD or she suffered trauma as a result of the ectopic pregnancy and everything that went with that because it's very traumatic. But I do not, I do not think that Gus is responsible for that or if he did contribute to it, that he should be held accountable to this day or that need to be made public at all. He also mentions this uncool comment that Gus made. At one point he said <laughs> he was glad it was ectopic because then neither of us had to choose and the choice was made for us um well that's a shitty thing to say but you were talking about how <laughs> you were gonna have the child after agreeing to not have it before you got pregnant so like why would he not think that at the very least right even if it's a shitty thing to think also no proof at all really no proof or anything in there <laughs> and it worked out yeah not a good thing to say, not gonna defend it. Obviously that was super insensitive, but the delivery of her saying that felt so practiced to me. 
like the laugh into the voice drop into the dramatic pauses she's an actress she's a great actress bro you can tell look look at her oh i just skipped away more of us than i intended to at all you can tell she's a great actor look at her videos man look at her look at this amazing acting hey, look at it. how ironic is it that she accused him of like skipping out skipping out on her <laughs> on her freaking ectopic pregnancy surgery or whatever to get drinks in her most popular video is ordering drinks at a bar ps cinema P.O. Cinema, my friend. Can I get you? Hello, I would like one alcoholic drink, please. funny we achieved the funny because then neither of us had to choose and the choice was made for us and it worked out yeah not a good thing to say not going to defend it obviously that was super insensitive but the delivery of her saying that felt so practiced to me like the laugh into the voice drop into the dramatic pauses i don't know it felt weird to me and before anyone says it Gus keeping him and his mother crying at the end of one of his comeback sketches was extremely intentional and was done to garner sympathy, and I've criticized others for doing that stuff. My point is, I don't like when either of them try to shift our focus from- That is super gay that he did that. The facts of the situation to their emotions, because it's what makes people so blind to the actual story here and leads to completely- Boogie made a video? <laughs> Boogie made a video. What did Boogie have to say about it? I bet it was a good take. Curious what Jay Aubrey said too. Garbage person. Did he ever make a follow up? What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Boogie two ninety eight coming at your live once again through the power of the internet. And today, included found some of what he did pretty cringy, but funny in a cringy way. I always found Gus at his best when he was either doing videos with his girlfriend, leader of this year's live. Sucks but it's way better than continuing to abuse a person. Thirdly, Gus says that he wants to take responsibility for what he did and grow and become a better person, but there has been evidence to surface, and I'm not gonna share it here, you can look it up, but there's- I'm not gonna share it here, you fat liar. What did Jay Aubrey have to say about it? Um, Gus Johnson, Jay Aubrey official podcast. All right, Gus Johnson. I forgive you, well, okay, yeah. but you still like his victims are still victims. Like, <laughs> I'm glad you, can't you forgive random him person for on the internet some... forgives them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you can't forgive him on someone else's behalf. You weren't the victim here. He may have somebody and you're like, yeah, I think you can move past this and grow as a person. Okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Her, um, this really traumatic experience in her life with her pregnancy and her miscarriage and then almost oh, dying as a result yeah. and she kept so she was talking about how like the healthcare system has failed her and like all that which yeah and then she was talking about um her boyfriend at the time and so but she doesn't name gus uh she just keeps saying that her like her ex-boyfriend and then people put it together people were like able to to like track like the, you know the dates that she was mentioning and she, oh, she was with gus at the time and she was basically saying that he was like completely like neglecting her her needs and um like wouldn't take her to the hospital when she was quite literally dying um she she basically i forget the the name of it um but she was internally bleeding at one point after the miscarriage and she it's like an endotic what is yeah, it ep, ep, oh, it's something with an e ep, ep, it starts with an e it's like kind of like internal pre yeah ectopic ectopic pregnancy yeah, yeah. and it's, it's very severe and, and life-threatening and she needed someone to take her to the hospital and gus was basically like oh sorry i've got work um I, i'm gonna go out drinking with some friends you know I, I can't or whatever and so instead of taking his girlfriend to the hospital she had to drive herself and then she gets there and they, they figure oh. out how severe it is she almost dies um and then, i mean that's just part of it there was this whole other thing where like, the baby make it no no she she miscarried no. and yeah it's really it was really sad was it like his goal because it's coming back to me now wasn't he like trying to pressure her into an abortion or something yeah i'm curious if these guys ever posted a clarification of this and like posted some more information about it maybe and like i think this was just he she mentioned in the video that like he forced her to like stay silent like she couldn't tell anybody not even her parents like when she was in the hospital oh, going through God, all of this and, and so i think this was she didn't really say that just her Fucking like reclaiming dude. that and just like being able to talk about it because she said like she, she only hopefully they have posted some kind of clarification maybe they did at some point and i'm unaware of it but yeah that seems silly <laughs> that seems really silly unrelated creators making entirely false boogie i don't expect any different from him he doesn't even know where he is he doesn't know his name he doesn't know if he has cancer or not and would suffer from episodes that were beyond a typical anxiety attack the only things that doctors said they could offer her were basically happy pills which she didn't want to take According to her, she was visiting Gus's family when she had another PTSD episode that was unlike her previous ones. This attack had new symptoms such as numbness and slurred speech. 
She asked Gus to take her to the doctor, and he responded that he would only do so if she called an advice nurse, and that advice nurse thought medical intervention was needed. So she leaves the room to call the nurse. Soon after, he enters the room where she's making the call and asks her to put the phone on speaker. She refuses, and in response, he attempts to grab her phone to put it on speaker himself. She decides to tangle her phone in her hair so that grabbing the phone would also mean grabbing her hair. She explains her thought process as challenging his resolve, saying, You're not gonna touch it. You're not gonna touch me. He still went to grab the phone, and while doing so, managed to pull her hair once. Obviously, it's not cool to grab your partner's phone, but... It's not domestic abuse, which is what she's implying. When you see people saying he pulled her hair, it's not like he was yanking her hair in order to inflict pain. It wasn't I'm Alex mode. It seems like he grabbed her phone. Is he ever going to respond, by the way? How long has it been? Is he going to respond? And her hair was pulled in the process because she ensured that would happen, and this only happened once. It's still bad. I'm not defending him at all, but in my opinion, that story wasn't enough to call him physically abusive, which I have seen people trying to argue. And even if you think it is a physically abusive act, according to the Oxford Dictionary, for someone to be classified abusive, they have to be engaging in or characterized by habitual violence and cruelty. Even further, the Washington State Department of Social... I mean, regardless, obviously people would say that definition is not all-encompassing because if you punch a girl in the head once, even if you don't do it habitually, if you do it once, people would say that's abuse. Thankfully, the second health service definition does show physical abuse is intentional bodily injury, slapping, pinching, choking, kicking, shoving, or inappropriately using drugs or physical restraints. So this clarifies it, but that first definition wasn't all-encompassing in my opinion. <laughs> states that for an act to be considered physically abusive, the harm to one's body has to be intentional, which in this case it wasn't, even by Sabrina's own story. And yeah, he Intentional, or there has to be a reasonable expectation that by doing what you're doing, there will be physical harm, which it doesn't seem like in that case there is that at all. Also, she's basically saying she baited him, you're not going to touch me. I mean, yeah. He's still responsible for his actions, and you can absolutely argue the problematic element of him wanting to listen to her phone call, but... This anecdote to me is nowhere near enough to call him physically abusive. And she was trying to like, in my- YouTube AI told me Boogie has ball cancer. Can anyone confirm? You should always trust AI. It's always telling the truth. Opinion imply it and try to hint that he was, but only give this story and not state that anything like this ever happened again. And look, typically I wouldn't overanalyze someone that's being called abusive. I'd usually just say, hey, screw that person. But in the larger context of the situation, including what I would call a clearly demonstrated agenda of being misleading, demonstrated by Sabrina, and the fact that this all took place almost four years ago, three of which was them- Yeah, I mean, can we even trust her on that situation? Still in a relationship? I do think these definitions matter. Anyway, on to the next thing. Sabrina stated that Gus expresses anger differently than her, and he would at times raise his voice during arguments while she would attempt to disengage. Weirdly enough, despite her- I mean, that's not nice, but yelling is not abuse. It's just not. <laughs> I'm sorry are clearly trying to imply that Gus was verbally and perhaps physically abusive throughout their relationship, she provides no specific instances of abusive behavior except for what I was just talking about. Everything else is really just implied with statements like, I wouldn't yell. And this is it. She has to talk in vagities. Because she knows that if she's actually held down in these allegations, she will look rich. I'm not the one who does that. And like, what does yelling mean? Like, does he raise his voice like this, or does- If you hit someone, you're in some sort of domestic relationship, it's abuse. If your ex-girlfriend keys your car and you hit her, it's assault, but not domestic violence. Legally speaking, I think that's probably true. Um, yeah. She scream in her ear, like, yelling or raising your voice, that means a lot of different things. And I'm going to talk about the specifics that she did go into, but it bothers me that we're still at the point where she's being vague and implying things instead of stating them outright. We obviously cannot know for sure what happened in their relationship, and people respond to things differently. But even without the context of everything else in the situation so far, it feels weird to me that she apparently feels cornered by her alleged abuser due to the Webby interview, yet she would only go into one story that could demonstrate the alleged abuse across a years-long relationship. Like, if you feel the need to respond to the people- the Relationship details almost never need to be made public, man. Relationships are complicated, and they're not meant to be seen by thousands of prying eyes, okay? If you're a victim of physical, you know, assault or uh, sexual assault or something along those lines, a super serious and a criminal action, should that be made public? Arguably, yes, after you've gone to the police. And I would say the reason why is to prevent more victims, okay? Um, but generally speaking, does it need to be made public if it's anything below that? I would say no. Nope, nope, nope. People calling you into question, respond. Don't kind of do whatever this was. Basically, I don't get what this stream was meant to do other than say he grabbed her phone once three years ago. Okay. 
good to know. Anyway, now that we're done with the content of her stream, I want to discuss the messaging of it. Because there were a lot of things that were said during the stream that I personally found to be misleading or hypocritical. And you're going to say, Jimmy, why aren't you doing that for Gus? That's not cool. How can you talk about integrity when you have none yourself? Well, I'm not really going to go after Gus as much because one, almost everything that he stated happened, happened behind closed doors and therefore I can't really comment on it. And two, he's been pretty direct. Like, there haven't been a lot of contradictions in his story, which I've been looking for this whole time. On the other hand, a lot of what Sabrina talked about are either things that we saw in the public eye or were just framed in a really, really specific way that really stood out to me. But fine, here's everything that Gus did that I think could be considered. All right, Gus's misleading statements. Considered misleading across the six months. Misidentifying couples coaching as couples therapy. I mean, that's so minor, though. Like, this is pedantic. It's good to clarify it anyway, but, like, this is so pedantic but we don't know if that was intentional. Keeping in a clip of him and his mother crying in one of his videos, something Sabrina also did. I mean, I just personally think cry- I mean, that is gay, but is that related to the situation? It doesn't look like it is. That's just unrelated, right? <laughs> crying in an edited video during a situation like this is incredibly manipulative since you have the choice to edit that out, but instead you choose not to because- She also chose to have a sponsorship on the video. <laughs> from fabulous lifestyle track or whatever. Want people to resonate with your emotional response, I guess. And yeah, it's obviously fair to say that Gus's motives for the Wubby interview were self-serving. Given the context- But like, what's wrong with that? If somebody's making false allegations against you or there's things you need to clear up at the very least, why does it not make sense to talk about that publicly? It's not always a bad thing to be self-serving. Is he supposed to like agree with her mischaracterizations and the fact that she like came for his career? The fact that she made this public, the fact that she made this public, pub, and the fact that she made this public in the first place, which she didn't even complain about, is he supposed to just agree with that all? Except of everything that happened, like you realize if you make a public allegation, Sabrina, people can talk about it and like disagree, right? Like they can do that. That's normal. I'm not calling that wrong or immoral, but it clearly was for personal gain. But even then, Sabrina has made tons of statements about I mean, personal gain. It's just to prevent personal loss more. Gus, while he hasn't really made any about her, so. I don't really have a problem with him wanting to say his piece when he feels as though he's being unfairly portrayed. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, misleading statements from Sabrina's stream. And a lot of this can easily be summarized in one sentence. Sabrina will say one thing that makes Gus look bad, but then make a completely contradictory statement that makes her look good. And then she just, I guess, hopes that you don't notice she's contradicting herself. I've already discussed a few examples of this if you want to pause and review, but let's go. One, she complains about being harassed with false claims while she encouraged the same towards Gus this whole time. I'd say that's a substantiated claim. Two, she kept, she said, keep my name out of your mouth despite making more statements and liking dozens of critical statements aimed at Gus. So, yep, yeah, that's definitely verified by true American patriots. And three, she says the strangers are not entitled to knowing every detail of her life, but she added several details about Gus's. That's very true also. Right? Like, you reveal the information in the first place. Obviously, people are going to ask questions. You don't get to just uncritically say something like that. Go over some more examples. So people have accused Gus of preventing Sabrina from confiding in her family during her pregnancy in an abusive show of power. These are accusations that Sabrina has confirmed by publicly liking them on Twitter. However, she says in her original video that she didn't talk to her family because they would be judgmental. And in this stream, she even elaborated further. She stated that she chose not to say anything because she wanted to protect Gus. Here are some clips. Another thing that was mentioned was that um, I had the choice in whether to tell my family. And that's true to some extent. I could not tell my family because I I wanted to protect him. I wanted but that that's your choice though. You could have told them if you wanted. He didn't prevent you. Why would you even like a tweet saying that he was preventing you when he wasn't? Here you say again it's your choice like off. <laughs> and to protect my boyfriend's reputation. Because also with family, you know, people talk and it could spread and I didn't want it to spread to the wrong people and spread to the internet and I didn't want people we didn't want people but you didn't want it to spread later to find out he didn't want people to certainly find out so you know that was why she's it... evil I mean she's not evil she's just like manipulative scorned misguided and a liar <sighs> call that what you want maybe that's evil I don't know was kept a secret yeah he said that I had the choice to tell my family talk about it you did you just didn't want to deal with the consequences as a result you always have a choice in the words of harvey specter you always have a choice okay when you're backed up against the wall break the wall down sabrina did i really yes you did 
you can't say someone forced you into something that you chose to do. So she said or confirmed something that implies that Gus is abusive, only to contradict it and say that she only made the choice to protect him, which makes her look better, right? In other words, and this is the first time I'm going to say this during the whole ordeal, she lied. Not was misleading, not was, you know, be playing with the truth. She outright lied. She confirmed accusations that she knew were not true. So she lied. And yes. this is a problem. The problem I've been having all along that a lot of people don't want to acknowledge. In my opinion, if your partner is abusive, <coughs> you shouldn't have to rely on misleading statements, half-truths, and outright lies. You don't need to at all. You don't need to at all. And it totally calls into question her credibility and everything else she says when she tells one lie, especially a big one is in order to affect their reputation. Also, that clip illustrates something that, in my opinion, really demonstrates what Sabrina's intentions have been from the start. Does anyone else find it weird that this whole experience is Sabrina just sharing her truth? It is about her sharing her experiences. It is not about spiting any individual. Yet whenever Gus failed her during these events, no matter how minor, she'll emphasize what he did. She'll allude to more things happening, but not actually talk about it. She'll fixate on it and make sure you know exactly how wrong it is and how much it hurt her. Yet whenever she talks about the serious ways that her family has dropped the ball in these situations, she reminds me of Anissa, honestly. She moves on like it's nothing. And at some of these points, her family screwed her way worse than Gus did. Let me In the hospital. Explain. Now, if you remember the clip I played before, when she was about to undergo her procedure to remove the ectopic pregnancy, she was literally facing death and yet still lied to her own mother and sister and told them not to come to the hospital because she didn't want to deal with that judgment. So that is how she views her family, people that are supposed to take care of her, that when she is inches away from death, they are going to focus on judging her as opposed to helping her. Yet the fact that these people are damn near monstrous, apparently- Hey, why don't you make a video about your family? She'll just kind of- Why don't you expose your mom? Be like fallen chungus, expose your, your aunt it off and not really mention it but oh gus didn't want to be judged by them cool mint says women being emotional and manipulative i can't believe it okay that's funny to joke about but uh women in general are not like this the average woman you meet like this the average woman you meet is not like abilene sabrina most girls are cool they're not gonna fuck you over like this they're not gonna make an allegation about you on twitter or a youtube channel okay no women hate okay it's funny to say women suck but I'm a feminist. I'm not going to stand for the unabashed women hate, okay? There are cool girls out there, okay? It's easy to get blackpilled by bad experiences with the girls, but not all women are like this, okay? Got to be fair. That's the problem. Even though he never said she couldn't tell them. She made that choice because she didn't trust her own mother and sister, yet it's a bad... Girls are based. I mean, not all girls are based. Some. Some aren't. But some are based. Hey, Tom, instead of poop maxing you goon max, you don't know what I max in my private time. I could be maxing out anything, literally anything. You have no idea. A reflection on Gus. Or how about the aftermath of her rhinoplasty? For those of you who don't know, Sabrina got a nose job. And after that nose job, Sabrina's mother was supposed to stay with her and take care of her during her recovery. However, Jesus. the mother left after just the first day. Her mother literally abandoned her. And if that sounds extreme, on wow. multiple instances, Sabrina has equated the minor cosmetic procedure, the nose job, to the life or death procedure she faced three years ago. She has equated them re- how do you explain how you treated her during her rhinoplasty, Gus? Dude, I don't expect anyone to come to the hospital if I get plastic surgery. That's stupid. When I get hair plugs, am I supposed to expect my entire lineage to be there? Repeatedly. So apparently it was so severe that she needed this level of care. Her own mother abandons her. Yet the problem is that Gus chose to work when he had work scheduled, when all she had was essentially the equivalent of a broken nose. Really? I don't know, if it's just about her sharing her truth, why is there such a big gap in her tone when talking about the ex-boyfriend that rejected her and her family who she has to see for the rest of her life? In my opinion, that difference speaks volumes. The issue isn't a lack of evidence. She doesn't have to prove that she was abused in order for me to say, screw that guy. But for me, the issue is if I called Phoenix Wright, he would- I want my family by my side when I get my enlargement surgery. Yeah, I always make sure my mom and dad are in the room when I jelk. Have a field day with Sabrina. Um, the whole gameplay of Phoenix Wright is, um, finding contradictions, so she was contra- They're fun games. I'm sorry, let's go back to the point. Okay, more- Objection! I'm gay! Contradictions. So, Sabrina understands why Gus got frustrated and- I mean, this guy, uh, he did his research. Good job, Jimmy Robbins. The GOAT, some may say. The GOAT! The aftermath of her procedure. Keep in mind, she kind of just moved herself into him and his friend's apartment so she wouldn't have to be alone. And I'm not criticizing her response to trauma, <laughs> but that was a legitimate strain on Gus's life, yet she constantly scrutinizes every time he would get frustrated with her. Like, it's fine to have a problem with what he did. But it's weird to me to make yourself look better by saying you understand and it's reasonable, but then make him look bad by scrutinizing actions from now almost four years ago. Like, it's okay to just say, this was unacceptable. End sentence. She also says it's messed up that Gus didn't reach out to her and handle this. What's up, Tom? How's the stream going? Thoughts on the main channel vid on Terry Davis? 
I want to know what the story is. I can't find any good vids. I think that Down the Rabbit Hole made a good vid, but it's probably outdated and pretty short. Um, I'll probably do a video on Temple OS at some point. You should talk to this guy sometime. Yeah, if he reaches out, I'm down. In the DMs when <coughs> she made no effort to contact him either. I think Wubby tweeted at me one time about keeping things in the DMs, and it's like... My DMs are empty. I already made my argument for this in a previous wow. video, but given the fact that she made a video exposing him and like dozens of hostile tweets towards him, wouldn't the reasonable assumption be that Gus contacting her would be seen as a threat or somehow aggressive? But no, no, no. Thanks, Sabrina. All the abusers should contact their victims when their victims try to hold them accountable. That is a great idea, and I am sure victims of abuse everywhere love the ideas you're trying to normalize. You're on a roll here, Sabrina. Also, keep in mind she said nothing to Gus about this video before it went live, so why does he have to handle this privately after she made it public and negatively affected his public? Also, for anyone asking about main channel vids, uh, the ones that are coming out this month at least, they're both really long, like hours long, so they're not going to be out like on a weekly basis for probably at least a month and a half or something. Um, those videos will be posted, I think, by the end of this month. I'm not going to reveal what they are, but they are coming out. But uh, for other stuff, uh, for other videos in the future, they, there might be some shorter ones, but... I just want to see what happens when we post and see what happens because they're great videos. Mauler long. Uh, I mean, they're both like three hours plus, I would say. <laughs> Give a hint. Nope. Public reputation. What are you talking about? She also says this huge statement. I don't know. When, you f when you're aware that somebody doesn't actually respect you as and see you as like a whole person. That's a huge thing to say. Why do you feel like he didn't see you as a whole person, though? Okay, you explained that he was a horrible boyfriend during the medical ordeal in 2018, and you said that in 2021 he didn't take off work to wait on you hand and foot after you got a nose job. There have been no accusations in between except he yelled sometimes, which could mean a thousand different things. So that's cool. Co-opt the language that victims of abuse use when telling their stories once your actions result in you being criticized, but don't actually provide why you felt that way during a three-year relationship. And before you say I'm nitpicking, how can you make a statement like that? Not an opinion. She stated that that is definitively how he feels, yet she provided no reasoning from the last three years. Really? Like, is that not such a huge leap from, yeah, he kind of sucked sometimes. She then talks about couples coaching and says, without talking about the substance of those sessions, as if she didn't out some of the details of those sessions already. Do you know the YouTuber Decoy Voice? Either way, you guys should collab in some sort of way. Live would be sick. He's a political lull, but basic common values is most of his videos. Decoy Voice? <laughs> How political is he? <clears throat> Decoy Voice. President Joe Biden. When he's not doing that weird jaw clench Mars attack speech thing that has his entire staff very concerned, he's making appearances with what I hope is just a Mars boy on his suit, which shouldn't be surprising as- Um, I mean, he seems fine. I, I don't know why I would sp specifically do a collab with him unless he asked me, but... <sighs> um, yeah, he seems cool. I don't know. I don't know a lot about him. So outing it out of context makes him look bad, but saying you'd respect the sanctity of those sessions makes her look good. So... I guess she just gets to have it both ways. And then to top it off, there's this. I made sure to hop on a stream and say, I am not trying to cancel him. Oh Actions no, speak louder than words, Sabrina. And the fact of the matter Wedgie is, mommy. you were fine with Gus being harassed for months when he never get went after you. Get, and get, get, get. you made the video so three weeks after he refused to take you back, which affected your lifestyle financially and mentally. Actions speak louder than words, and you can't act like you weren't the one to make the situation as hostile as it is. You just didn't expect that hostility to be aimed at you at any point. And look, this is very touchy, so I'm going to talk about it in detail in a moment, but she also constantly goes back and forth between saying that Gus was forcing her to get an abortion and saying she was always going to get it and she wanted it. Like I said, I don't get how you could force someone to do something they were always going to do. I have problems with Gus's described actions around the abortion, for sure, and I'll talk about that, but I don't understand how you can be forced to do something you wanted to do. But that's all I'll say about her contradictions, because for now, I have two things left to talk about. The problem surrounding the discourse of this topic by large creators, and my personal take top to bottom on the whole situation and how I think they should have been handled, because... Oh my, I, I forgot that we started this segment by going over Nick Is Not Green's new video where he apologized. <laughs> I forgot that's how this began. I went down the rabbit hole, Jesus Christ. All right. Well, I guess we're going to get into Nick Is Not Green and Mr. Beard now. Lord only knows that's what this case is missing. But first, we got to talk about the worst boy band in history. So the general discourse Let's around go. this topic has been really messy, to say the least. And how could it not be? There's a lot of vagueness and contradicting statements and things of that nature, not to mention huge creators saying things that are outright not true, such as the fact that Gus almost got Sabrina killed, which isn't true at all. Once again, he never prevented her from seeking medical care. At worst, he didn't immediately take her to medical care when she had other options. So, of course, the conversation around this is going to be really confusing. So I want to talk about some of the loudest voices in this controversy and the reason I think they are doing more harm than good in the situation, especially for Sabrina. First, though, let's acknowledge the obvious. 
don't be sexist and don't harass people. Your response to this video should not be to contact anyone involved in the situation. That's not the point here. Sabrina has faced more misogynistic comments and remarks than she should have to, and she should have to face none. And I haven't gotten much of those comments, but just know if I see that, then that person will be forever banned from commenting on my channel, because I don't stand for that nonsense. However, one, it's really easy for me to say sexism bad, and two, this is not even <laughs> close to the majority of criticism towards her that I've seen, but I'll get to that. So, okay. Yeah, but obviously with that kind of thing, you know, someone like Dick is not green in his prime, or Ethan is online probably right now, or Mr. Beard would probably be like, all the criticism is for misogynists. I've seen so many misogynistic, racist, bigoted comments. Therefore, all the criticism is bad. Hey, that's one of the problems with the pro-Gus side. What's the problem with the other side then? Well, a lot of the people arguing that Gus is irredeemable and beyond having a career ever again are deploying really shallow and unhelpful tactics in order to look good and make it look like they're advocating for women's rights, but don't actually do anything to make the situation better if you think about it for two seconds. Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all for clout, right? Thanks for streaming for so long. No problem. That's my job. For example, a lot of the people, including myself, who are criticizing Sabrina fall into one of three categories. One, they're sexist. I mean, again, it's not a huge percentage, but we got to acknowledge it. Two, they don't think Gus's actions, as described by Sabrina, constitute abuse, but at worst, neglect. And three, they do think some of Gus's actions might constitute abuse, but they don't think it's relevant because it happened over three years ago. Also, Gus and Sabrina dated for three years after, and she hasn't provided any accusations for the last three years that would be widely considered abusive. And so, unfortunately, a lot of the big creators arguing in favor of Sabrina aren't actually arguing. All they're doing is operating under the assumption that Sabrina has proven beyond a doubt that Gus is an abuser, and anybody who disagrees is either sexist or ableist or wants to enable an abuser or whatever. They state opinions as facts, make hasty generalizations, say stuff like, oh, trust me, I know the full story. You should cancel Gus because I said so, but I won't give more information. And that full story has nothing to do with things they actually witnessed themselves, but rather what they were told by Sabrina. But ultimately, they do nothing but make statements that make them feel really good about themselves without actually contributing to the conversation here. Let's go over some examples. Now, usually I don't make it a habit to call out multiple larger creators at once because there is always the risk that they brigade me using their larger numbers as opposed to arguments, but you really can't talk about the situation without talking about this. So all of the- You shouldn't be worried about that though. I mean, that might happen, but Ultimately, if you're telling the truth, in the end, people will see that you're telling the truth, and that's all that will matter, okay? Like, obviously, in the short term, you call it a big creator, you might be brigaded, you might get a bunch of criticism from them, they might lie about you, but ultimately, the audience will eventually see the truth in these situations, I think. I have confidence in that. It tends to come across that way, um, and you will be fine. So don't be afraid of mean comments. Be afraid of being wrong. Be afraid of spreading misinformation, and do your best to get that right. Ultimately, a few people on you at the same time won't really matter. You'll be fine. The tweets I'm going to show you are from people that Sabrina is friends with and has publicly engaged with in the last year, unless I say otherwise. Cool. First, I want to talk about a small example from Eddie Burback. Now, Eddie was Gus's comedy partner, podcast co-host, and best friend for years. Eddie cut ties with Gus after the situation went down. And in response to this, Eddie received a lot of undue hate from people who were basically telling Eddie how to feel, despite whatever going down between Gus and Eddie not being public knowledge. Eventually, Eddie made this comment on Reddit. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the one issue I have here is the fact that he just says, Gus was awful to me without context. Like, that could mean he was hurt about being lied to about the situation since 2018, or that Gus was an abusive friend. I mean, that's true. He doesn't have to share details, I guess. I wish he would, but I, I guess he doesn't have to. Towards Eddie. And look, I get Eddie's in a real weird place here, but like I said, I don't <laughs> like statements that leave things up to the imagination when this... You know what? Actually, I agree, I agree with what he's saying. Discussing people already under scrutiny. And also he, probably, he probably should clarify what whatever went down between him and Gus. If he's willing to support Sabrina's allegation at the very least and drop him as a friend, right? If he's going to make an allegation, he was awful to him. He should probably say why. I don't think that's a crazy expectation. So if Eddie was the victim of abusive actions by Gus and he said so, then that would go a really long way to validating... <laughs> that's not how you felt during the 2 Mad drama? Well, obviously I was upset, but I still made the video, right? And I think, I think the truth will come out in time with that stuff. Uh, I'm not going to overplay my hand here, but... I'm 1,000% sure at this point that James Key is a mentally ill, delusional, crazy person. And I think that the truth will come out eventually about that, but it's just not my place to do it right now. But yeah, um, I think it will come out. Sabrina's claims. But that is one criticism in a sea of Eddie handling this way better than most people ever could. So I have nothing else to say there. Because the bulk of the discourse I want to discuss surrounds three creators. Ethan is online, Nick is not green, and Mr. Beard. For transparency, I have personally never heard of these people before this situation, except for Mr. Beard on TikTok, because, well, they're pretty big there. That's not an insult or anything to anyone, I just haven't seen their content personally, but they're all pretty successful in their own right. Anyway, let's check out this thread from Ethan that was retweeted and liked by a lot of the creators involved in the situation and easily demonstrates my problem here. Maybe if abusers, referring to Gus, are genuinely remorseful for the pain they've caused, they wouldn't use every opportunity to center the conversation around- In reference to Ethan, they say, yeah, he was crying about Alex Rosen because people called him a pedo. 
To be clear, even though Ethan is online was a part of the false allegations against Super Mega, I don't think it's justified to call him a file. I don't think anyone should do that. Ethan is online is not a file. He's just dumb, and that's enough. It's not cool to call him a when he's not. How hard it is to deal with their own consequences. Hmm, this is already false. Gus made multiple statements during the aftermath of the situation where all he does is apologize. And in response, Sabrina escalated the situation by being, in my opinion, misleading on multiple occasions. You can pause to read why I'm not explaining this again. The first time Gus released anything that focused on his emotional state was him crying in a sketch four and a half months after this happened, after he made multiple apologies. Is it fair to criticize Gus for keeping the crying or for doing the interview or for complaining a few times about the situation during his streams? Absolutely. Is it fair to criticize him? I don't think it is fair at all. Dude, but... I don't think it's fair to criticize him for talking about it. I don't think that's real. Gus Johnson's situation is false. I mean, some of the stuff Sabrina said is true. I just don't think it matters. She did tell a few specific lies, but I, I just I don't think that the stuff that she did say that he admitted to is that bad. I don't think it's abusive either. Uh, I don't think anyone should care or that it's anyone's business. Uh. What you're saying is straight up false. Neither of them has done all good here and neither has done all bad. We have seen that with our own eyes. So stop trying to tell people what they are seeing with their own eyes. I promise you it doesn't convince anyone. But oh, now Ethan looks like he's passionate about the righteous cause. Good for you. I mean, you didn't change anyone's opinions or make the situation better for your friend, nor did you try to, but you look good. Congrats. Well, Jimmy, have you never heard of hyperbole? You might say, of course I have. But when you are arguing that consequences should be brought on someone else, specifically someone where there are people who will believe anything you say about them, yeah, I have a problem with vagueness, hyperbole, and contradicting statements. If you're so sure of your arguments, you shouldn't have to rely on those things. It must suck so bad to be a bad person. Wow, too bad there's no solution to this, huh? What's the solution, Ethan? This stuff happened four years ago. Since then, he's gone to therapy to seek help not repeating his actions. And I'm not talking the coaching versus therapy stuff. I'm saying in his original video, he stated he's been to individual therapy and his ex asked him to get back together. And yet instead of trying to exhibit this apparent control he has over her by taking her back, he turned her down in no uncertain terms. And at no point does he attempt to rally his significantly larger audience to go after her. I'm genuinely asking here, what is the more obvious solution other than allowing someone to share a narrative that you believe to be false? The kind of audience that you get from appearing on a greasy little weasel stream to cry about how upset you are is exactly what you do. It's crazy for Ethan is online to call someone a greasy weasel, okay? This guy is in no position to call anyone out on their appearance at all. Hi, we're done. Look at this guy. He looks He looks strung out on fentanyl. You should not be calling Pay Money Webby a greasy weasel, okay? You're fat. Classy, dude. Nothing says I'm on the righteous side like personal insults about one's character and appearance. So let's review. None of this attempted to convince new people of your argument. Instead, you look really good, got to insult people, but how did this tweet make things better for Sabrina? It is about Sabrina, right? N not your own ego, right? Because in my opinion, this just reads as ego. Now for our next offender. Nick is not green as a commentary creator who has worked with Gus around once in the past and is friends with Sabrina. In response to Gus's interview, Nick made a video that, in my opinion, is honestly one of the most ridiculously amateur commentary videos I have ever seen, with zero concern for actually trying to make the situation better or actually inform the viewer about the situation. I'm not going to do a play-by-play -play of his entire video because my video is already way longer than I want it to be, but let's explain why I, an amateur commentary creator, am calling him an amateur. Nick's video states opinions as facts, constantly. He states the intention of other people as facts, uses adjectives to objectively describe one's actions, and uses the fact that he- Which is exactly what he did with Super Mega, by the way. And I still think, by the way, that Nick should be eventually forgiven if he genuinely changes his behavior. I don't think you should hold it against him forever. But, but- it is still important to go over this and how we mishandled it to understand how we can avoid situations like this in the future, detect red flags from unreliable narrators, and be, you know, just aware of how things go because this will happen again. False allegations, exaggerated allegations, mischaracterization, misinformation will always happen. Nick hasn't stopped his behavior. I mean, he stopped uploading. I think he did stop his behavior. He apologized for it like seven times. He knows the people involved to strengthen his opinion despite providing no perspective other than I was told these things by Sabrina and he provides ultimately no new information. He also intentionally leaves details out of his recollection of events often to contribute to a certain narrative. <coughs> Here are some highlights of what I mean. When one person right after a breakup really just smears you like this. Besides the fact that Sabrina doesn't use Gus's name throughout her original video and her relationship with him was only a small but necessary part of the video. That's intentionally misleading and you know it dude. You're apparently trying to make this better for Sabrina, your friend, yet you're ignoring criticisms that even Mr. Beard has said are valid. I'll get to Mr. Beard, don't worry, but she didn't say Gus's name, but she confirmed his identity within six hours on multiple platforms. She liked dozens of hostile Precisely. tweets directed at him and escalated the situation with misleading or vague or, as Mr. Beard admitted, cryptic statements on multiple occasions. She did smear him and did use his name. Stop lying. Because if your side is right, why do you need to lie about what we've seen for ourselves? Because their side is not right. 
It's way more complicated than they want people to think. Are you kidding me? Hey, here's another lie. Through all of this, Sabrina has not gained subscribers. Let's look at the last year of her getting subscribers on YouTube, shall we? So weird that October- The thing is, like, even if she didn't gain subscribers, like, it, does that mean that she's telling the truth? She could have wanted to, and it didn't happen. At the very least, I think it's clear that she wanted Gus to lose subscribers. I think that's very clear. But apparently here she did gain 10k subs in a month. Over was her biggest month of the last 12. And her original video is her second most viewed video on YouTube ever, and her second to ever break a million views. And, and her ex-boyfriend lost more subscribers than she even has alongside multiple sources of income. What do well, you- she cost him 300k subs? Oh my god. Mean she gained nothing from the situation. This is all publicly available, dude. Are you kidding me? If Sabrina was blatantly lying about Gus and her statements were inflammatory and aimed to mischaracterize him, why would he release two apologies validating Sabrina's feelings only to come back six months later and act like he has been- how does this relate to Nick? Well, Nick basically covered the allegations back in the day and I'd say repeated what Sabrina said, unsubstantiated, even brought up stuff that she didn't even say in her original videos because he just assumes that she has good intentions, right? So that's how Nick covered the entire situation. It's been misunderstood the whole time when everyone knows how these YouTube cancellations end. The canceled creator remains financially comfortable while the victim is bullied by the creator's remaining. Yeah, that's definitely what happened here fans until they leave the internet so the solution is that when someone makes a false allegation or a dubious allegation you ruin the other person's life that's what you do you just answered your own question bud maybe he wanted to reduce the harassment and not worsen the experience of her reliving her trauma i don't know if it is but that is a possible answer to your question skeptics of sabrina would ask why she waited so long to talk about her abusive relationship when she worked closely and was living with gus and didn't want to speak out about someone who was still so involved in her life at the time yet when gus waits six months to suddenly go against sabrina's words for seemingly no other reason than to save his sad career to suddenly go against sabrina's words is it that sudden? Like, she made a public allegation. He can respond when he wants. Here, Wubby and his fans will accept it. Sad career. Once again, like, Nick is not green as a commentary channel. The hubris he had at this point. I, I always loved, like, Brad, Brad tasted this to me, too. And he did apologize, you know. But, like, this is always what these people do. They're always, like, commentary channels are so sad. You know, that's what Brad's girl did. Or in the case of uh, Nick is not green. Gus Johnson's career is sad because he makes skit videos. Or in the case of Super Mega, Super Mega is sad because they make Let's Play videos. Like, dude, you're a drama YouTuber. You're the bottom of the totem pole. Don't sit on a high horse, okay? You're corny. You're all corny. And praise him for being brave. Sure, but a lot of people mostly... Check DM. Oh, I saw that, Nick. Yeah, that's funny. We, we talked about that on stream. Bros Malay. Am I going to sneeze? Ugh. <coughs> 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 criticize calling him an abuser present tense for things that happened three years ago and criticize her for releasing the video right after she asked him to get back together and all of the time she was misleading about stuff that happened three years ago wait i'm sorry it's easier to generalize everyone who's criticizing her instead of acknowledging the valid criticism see this is how you get people to stop this is how you change their minds brilliant gus repeatedly says that he was intimately involved in the situation but at the same time repeatedly distances himself from sabrina saying that he couldn't imagine what she was going through that's not a contradiction. So I was hit by a car 10 years ago. I'm not comparing that to her thing. Her thing is way more traumatic. I didn't almost die. But there were people that were involved in my entire physical recovery. I had four fractured vertebrae I had to recover from. And those people have no idea what that event did to me. And I would be furious if anyone on this earth claimed to know what, what I was going through with that event. Proximity does not equate to expert knowledge as Nick is currently demonstrating for us. Also, if Gus said that he understood what Sabrina was going through, I have a really hard time believing that you wouldn't have criticized him for that too. Gus will be very specific about the things he went through when he wants sympathy and will talk in detail about what he feels and what he's gone through, even lying about things that Sabrina said. What did he lie about? And why can he not talk about how he feels? Is that like illegal? Is that against the law to talk about how he feels? Like, what, what the f*** are you talking about? <laughs> Bless you, thank you. Do some people in public... Not even in public. Sorry, not in public. I don't want strangers to say it, although they should. I say bless you when someone sneezes. But when I'm hanging out with people and I sneeze and nobody says bless you, it's like, dude, you should die in Minecraft. Say bless you. I just sneezed out a demon. Said or did in order to gain more sympathy. But when he has the opportunity to be open and honest about what he did, he refuses to be specific because he knows he can't get away with the horrific things he said or did to Sabrina. Dude, I need whatever psychic you're using because they would make videos so much easier. It also could be because going into detail about every accusation and providing context about things he feels were unfair would result in this being dragged out and Sabrina being harassed, something you said should be a concern of his. I'm not saying that was definitely Gus's goal, but you can't state someone else's intention. At best, you could speculate and make an argument with evidence as I have. At no point have I stated Sabrina's intention. Rather, I've said that her stated intention does not match her actions, in my opinion. 
See what I did there? I talked about this last time with a different creator, but expressing opinions and speculations as fact does not convince anyone, and it seems to just make you look foolish in the end. Gus tweeted that after he canceled his tour, Sabrina tweeted this as an attack towards him. Mm -hmm. I, I announced on Instagram that I had to cancel the tour, and then without about an hour of that, she, she tweeted out, that's showbiz baby. Um, there's an exclamation point on there. <laughs> and, um... I just not only does this and so many of Gus's complaints boil down to oh man she was being so mean to me but the tweet had nothing to do with the tour according to Sabrina stop stating intentions as fact you are not an insider about what happens inside of people's minds or really at all since it doesn't seem like you experienced anything firsthand you were just told stuff by one party also in post I realized there's one more thing I wanted to point out in this video that in my opinion illustrates the problems here really well so in Gus's interview he makes the claim that a lot of creators who were talking about the situation online were pretending that they had a relationship with Gus in order to strengthen their opinions to add validity to their opinions and in response to that Nick says this well I don't know if you can say that about me so the really funny thing here to me is that Nick literally does the thing that Gus criticizes creators of doing where he's saying like well no Gus you can't deny that I know you, we worked together once, and I worked with your brother once. Two, despite relying on the fact that Nick quote-unquote knew Gus to strengthen his authority here, Nick provides no unique perspective, because he didn't actually know Gus that well, it seems. Like, Nick doesn't say, yeah, as a result of my friendship with Gus, I learned- Why did, why did Nick feel so entitled to talk about these situations and, like, weigh in and, like, cancel people, is my question. Like, if he was doing his due diligence, like, obviously you could say the motivation is, like, to tell the truth about the situation and get it out there. Why does he feel the need to like be involved in all these situations in White Knight? I really hate that shit. I really hate it, man. <laughs> this. As a result of my friendship with Gus, I saw this. I witnessed this. I noticed this. It's literally just, well, I had a relationship with Gus. Okay, anyway, so this is what Sabrina said. So with the exception of that last clip, all of that happened just in the first 16 minutes of Nick's 45 minute long video. And so much of the video is just criticizing- Did he ever, is that video still up? Did he ever remove it? I'm curious. Did he specifically apologize for this one? I don't remember if he did. Um, okay, so it looks like he actually got rid of this video. Gus Johnson's embarrassing interview. So he got rid of that one. So that's good. That's actually quite good. I like that. YouTube should ban Nick is not green. I don't agree with that. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts because today we are taking a quick drive through some YouTube drama. I am so excited. Normally, I don't talk about like other YouTube drama that doesn't pertain to me. All right, I don't care. Wubby, which, yeah, sure, you can criticize him as an interviewer or you can criticize his coverage of the situation, but that really doesn't have much to do with Gus or Sabrina beyond just saying it wasn't the right venue. You see how quickly I was able to present that opinion? Add like two minutes of clips and you're done. And I have more notes just from those 16 minutes, but I think I made my point and already talked about this for way too long. But in case you missed- Part of the bigger problem with Nick's videos that's like in contrast to this guy is like Nick would make a claim and not show evidence. And when he would make a claim with evidence, it would be like an unsubstanti unsubstantiated rumor. Like with the Nick is not green video about um, Super Mega. The one specifically, the first one where he read the Reddit post out uncritically, like that one's pretty bad my point you're not convincing anyone of anything when you rely on these tactics all you're doing is getting the people who already agree with you to say that they already agree with you it's not doing anything but anyway let's move on to the star of our performance you ask me mr beard is by far the most unhinged person in this whole situation they've made dozens of tweets about it constantly so mr beard he made the i'm fat video or whatever right <sighs> he made a he, he made a fundraiser for his fat loss film or something you guys know what i'm talking about right Let's see this. Oh yeah, this. This is goaded. I was fat even when I wasn't. Well, lucky for me, my fears came true as I grew and grew. I think we've seen enough. Not that that invalidates all of his opinions, but that is the realm of YouTube we're in. He relied on personal insults over making points, and have just embarrassed themselves at pretty much every possible turn. But first, who is Mr. Beard? Well, they're a really big TikToker who might be friends with Sabrina. I don't. Oh, he came from TikTok. I didn't even know that. No, guys, they, they might be like a close friend of hers. No idea. I, I really wish that they would enlighten us about this possibility <laughs> well, because now. it is such a big question to leave unanswered. That's not a little weird. Well, thank but God you talked to Sabrina. If you talked to her, that means you told the truth, right? Doesn't come off as trying to insert yourself. It's just me who thinks that. Okay. Mr. Beard's entire position on this seems to be that if you don't agree with Sabrina, you're basically garbage. And this position relies on completely misrepresenting the points of people that disagree with Mr. Beard or responding to the most insane criticisms of Sabrina, but ignoring anyone who actually articulates their points well. Because, well, if you think about it, doesn't that kind of make it seem like everyone who's criticizing her is crazy or sexist since those are the only people he's responding to? Here's some examples. Well, yeah, because that's how you get a point across. You make it look like everybody who's responding to you is crazy. Everybody who thinks you're wrong is insane. Everybody who agrees with you, well, they're normal, mentally healthy, and cool. Hot take. It is 100% fine for partners to publicly shame their exes for abusive behavior. It helps keep other people. I don't think that it was abusive. And I don't think it's cool to do that unless it's like a crime rising to a level of like something genuinely evil, which what Gus did is not. 
safe from their exes, and it makes abusers know that abusive actions actually have consequences. I'm surprised how many people online disagree with this. One, Sabrina has never publicly used the word abuse to describe her experience, so really classy defining her experience for her. Yeah, guys, don't talk over her, define her experience, or put words... Not that Sabrina would have a problem with that, because she wants people to think that Gus did everything. If somebody said Gus Johnson Sabrina, she'd probably like it. ...in her mouth. Only her close personal friends can do that. Also, this is a complete misrepresentation of the issue lots of people have with Sabrina. It is fine to out your partners for abuse, and you do not need proof to do it, but there is a way to do it that brings about the accountability we all should want without increasing the opportunity for people to lie about their experiences and make false accusations, something Mr. Beard admitted does happen. And that's not even to mention the fact that all of the problems she's describing were handled and forgiven in the context of the relationship, so unless that was ongoing for three years, I don't personally see why it's relevant anymore. True. Take the Sky Does Minecraft situation. The next girlfriend accused Adam of abuse. When you search Trisha Paytas... Trisha Paytas oiled up, it autofilled. No, it did not. No, it did not. It did not autofill. You're full of shit. Thank you for the dono, but you're a liar. Wendigoon is just as bad as Nick is not green, spreading misinformation and false accusations against me. You're a piece of shit. Thank you for the hundred, though, very much. I do appreciate that. But you're a piece of shit. Fuck you. I'm still fishing. You know exactly where I'm going fishing. You know where I'm taking my rod. I'm sticking the nightcrawler directly into your anus. Zin check. Think about Zin right now. Don't you want one? I actually do. I'm going to give myself a little break so I don't have to piss again. I think the Zins are making me piss or something, honestly. I also need to get some more water soon, but I'm trying to avoid another piss break right now. All right. I want to see where Mr. Beard... You know what? Fuck it. I need to Zin. When you're right, you're right. If I throw up, it's your fault. Um, Very curious to see how Mr. Beard responded to Jimmy Robbins. How did Mr. Beard respond to Jimmy Robbins? We will find out next on Gunatar. Also, the way that Mr. Beard interacts with smaller creators who disagree with them is really interesting. Jump scare. I should know because they reached out to <coughs> me like a coward. So for those of you who don't know, there are two ways that I'm notified about comments I receive on YouTube. There's a hub where comments are generally stored, and since I can get dozens of them on some days, I don't get notifications about all of those comments. But in addition, there is a separate hub that displays comments that YouTube thinks are particularly interesting. And in my case, as a small channel, it usually means it's a larger creator. And for those comments, I do get a notification on both my lock screen and within YouTube's channel management app, YouTube Studios. So shortly after my last video talking about the situation went live, I received an interesting comment from Mr. Beard. Now, for context, in my last video, I specifically called out commentary creators with no background in psychology or social work for acting like professionals on abuse, mental health, or psychology in general. Expressing opinions is one thing, but to define someone else's traumatic experience with language that they have not used when you have no education that qualifies you to make such statements, I don't know. It's not cool, if you ask me. Because many of your followers will just take your word, especially as a commentary creator, because you're building a relationship of trust with your audience, despite the fact that your opinions are no more valid than someone with an anime profile picture. And I didn't really need... Yeah, I would agree. I think playing, uh, there's a lot of YouTubers who will play like armchair psychologists. I don't think that's right. I think you can glean enough from the situation with the facts without having to like pretend that you're Freud. Names in my last video to avoid brigading, but Mr. Beard was certainly the worst offender of all this, and I was indirectly calling them out in particular. Now, See how many you can do at once? No. Remember, Mr. Beard is an accomplished creator on YouTube. Myself. They know okay. how YouTube Studio works. They left a comment on my video saying, Dude, by the way, okay. Yesterday something traumatic happened. I think Abelini, Sabrina, and Nick is not green. Should make videos about it. I was taking a shit. I finished my shit, and I was I was wiping with a toilet paper, and I was like, man, I wish I had a wet wipe right now because you know there's just a lot going on right now. My ass hair is you know probably matted. Some dark stuff is happening. Okay. So I look behind me on the toilet, and oh, what do you know? There is some wet wipes. I take one out. I wipe my ass, and I didn't read the label because on the label. It said bleach wipes. So my asshole felt like Dante's Inferno for five to ten minutes. I had to get in the shower and wash my ass. And I don't have, I don't have like the detachable shower head. So I was like on the ground with my ass pointed at the shower head trying to get the bleach out of my ass. Okay. So I am traumatized and I'm, I'm suing everyone involved. Abelina Sabrina made me do it. All right. Wendigoon made me do it. My my ass hurt so bad. And it's not even the first time I've done it in my life. Okay? I was so mad I almost put my foot through the drywall. It hurt. I literally put bleach inside of my rectum. So I'm gay. Now. Quote, this is a truly horrible video. You need help. So in response to me saying that they shouldn't act like a psychology expert when they aren't one, they decided to make a definitive statement where they identify the state of my mental health. Come on, you can't make this up. Now, I woke up within an hour of- Is Mr. Beard a they-them? I didn't even know that. I wasn't aware. 
this comment and I was shocked to see they deleted it. So only I would ever see this comment via the <laughs> notification and it wouldn't make them look bad because the general public would never see it. Now, it's my word against theirs, so they got to leave their pointless hate comment but their reputation doesn't change. Man, if only I took a screenshot of the notification, gee whiz, that sure would have it's been a good over. idea. It's over, it's right? over. Mr. Beard I really is over. I wish I thought ahead there, but it seems I've been outsmarted by a tick. Lamau, you need help. You need help. Tax star, truly I cannot stoop any lower. If you're not looking at your screen, look at it for a second. You're fat, Mr. Beard. You're fat. Second. Okay, thank you. Mr. Beard, you are truly pathetic. In my opinion, you have done nothing but make the situation worse for Sabrina by presenting consecutive flawed arguments while trying and failing to gain validity due to your repeated claims of being Sabrina's close friend. If you ask me, you have not attempted to actually educate anyone on this situation, but rather just try to appeal to the people who already agree with you in order to boost your own image and ego while making Sabrina look worse due to your demonstrated inability to maintain composure while engaging with the people criticizing her. And with this comment, Either you knew I would receive the notification regardless of if you deleted the comment, or with millions of followers, you still don't know how to control yourself when using your platform. Either way, you have done nothing but embarrass yourself and Sabrina, your close friend, because when people see you acting like a clown when representing Sabrina, I can't see how that's going to do anything but reinforce their belief that she's in the wrong. You could have re I agree. Ultimately, I think the situation could have been avoided in the first place by Sabrina never making the allegation public because her allegation, which is basically, you know, at the worst of it, that she had an ectopic pregnancy and he wasn't at the hospital when it happened. You know, was it shitty of him? I guess it was kind of shitty. He didn't know she had that at that point. She had already made a bunch of hospital visits, so should have been expected that he should know that that was going on. I'd say no. But it's good that he eventually showed up and he was there. Now, the claim that he pressured her into getting an abortion is, in my opinion, really bad faith. And the reason why it's bad faith is because they agreed beforehand that if she got pregnant, she would abort it. And when she got pregnant, she then decided to change her mind. You don't get to do that. You don't. You're, you've signed the social contract. You've said, I'm getting the abortion. Was If he was really angry at her or demeaning, was that wrong? Yeah, probably. I would say so. But did that need to be made public? Absolutely not. Avelina Sabrina is not a victim. She's a victim of an ectopic pregnancy, which sucks, but that's not Gus's fault. She's not a victim of him. It never needed to be made public. And frankly, she deserved her channel dying as a result of what she did. And I don't feel bad for her. That is the conclusion that I have drawn from this entire situation. And I think that's the only conclusion you can draw.